Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Cool. Welcome to the stream, people. 1980, the beginning of a prosperous and colorful decade brimming with upward momentum. Disco was dying and pop rock and rap would go on to dominate the charts for the foreseeable future. Pink Floyd was putting another brick in the wall. Blondie beckoned us to pick up the phone and call me. Lips Inc. took us to Funky Town. Smokey Robinson was cruising while Christopher Cross went sailing and Michael Jackson made it clear that he wanted to rock with you. On television, our attention was arrested by chips. We boarded the love boat and went to Fantasy Island. The Jeffersons got that deluxe apartment in the sky, and those Duke boys made Boss Hogg's life a living hell. Mount St. Helens erupted. Pac-Man made arcades the place to be. Sandra Day O'Connor became the first woman to serve on the Supreme Court. John Lennon was shot ending any chance of a Beatles reunion. And a one-term Democrat who left the country in financial ruin was replaced by a celebrity Republican. In the cinema, the gritty, grainy look of 70s realism was being replaced by bright, colorful comedies, bloody slashes filled with elaborate kills, and the dawn of the action hero. Tonight, we will take a look into the first year of the best decade in movie history. Each member of the panel has chosen their 10 favorite movies from the year 1980, and we will be ranking them based on how many of our list each movie is on. The more panelists that have a movie on their list, the higher the ranking will be. So let us see which films are truly top tier. Curtis? That's great. So everyone in the chat, thank you for showing up. Thank you. Glad to be here. The hey, shout out everybody. What up, fam? Curtis, you're muted. If uh, everybody wants to say a little hello before we get started, let everybody know who you are. We're still waiting on a couple people, but you know, it's America in 2024. The odds of everyone being on time are slim to none. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I'll start off. Uh, my name's Curtis, and um, you guys know me as uh, Sergeant Schultz or or Kurt Kenobi or Star Wars Squawk Box. Um, tonight, we're going to have some fun with our, our best movies. Chat's welcome to say if they like that movie or not, or if they want to write a little something in there about what they remember about that movie, that's fine. Um, with uh, further ado, I'll introduce you to Ed. Okay. Hello from the other side. Uh, uh, hello, is it me you're looking for? I don't know. I ran out of songs. Uh, hello again, <coughs> the cars. I could keep going. Uh, I'm Ed from uh, Geek Homeworld, uh, where I talk film, TV, and tech on my podcast on YouTube. Uh, I've been in the game since 08. Um, I'm a sound guy uh, and all that fun stuff. I uh, worked in the film industry and all them other things. Thank you for uh, allowing me to be here as part of this list. Um, Check out everybody's uh, social media and stuff here in their channels. I'm sure they'll all appreciate it. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, what's up, everybody in chat? <clears throat> 78, Dirt Studios, Mark Cosplay, Big Am. What are you guys doing tonight? Uh, this will be a really good time. A uh, uh, long time. I think it's been about two or three, four weeks in the making. Prophet's been doing and, and reminding us, hey, give me your movies, give me your movies. And he set up a pretty good program for tonight. So we were all pretty excited. And uh, it's supposed to go on for another 1981, 1982, 1983, and so on. So uh, very, very good. Thanks, Prophet, for doing it. Thanks for hosting, Kurt. Mm -hmm. Moto, how about you? Hi, my name is Moto Viper. I'm newer to collecting, but an avid film buff. Love my movies, love music, and all that good stuff. And I'm excited to see how this unfolds over the next few weeks. As the industry, as we know gets much, much better by 1989. Yeah, indeed, my friend. Uh, we're going to be uh, putting out one of these uh, every other week. So if you guys like this show, then come on back in two weeks and we'll be doing it again for 1981. Yes, Sarah. And please put in your input in the chat. If, if there's another movie that we didn't make the list that could have been an honorable mention, put it up there. I'd like to see what it would have been. How close to mind. Please tell us. Yeah, by all means. 
Please tell I'm us. sure that a lot of people are going to have uh, movies on their list that none of us chose. Please tell Absolutely. us why our picks are full of crap, too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, did All right. Let's, so, let's have some fun with this. Yeah, hit that further right ado, right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the slideshow so we can get started. Let's do this, man. I was okay. young. I needed the money, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, all so starting off, this movie, uh, 9 to 5, was picked by only one person, M3. Uh, not that the rest of us, you know, didn't enjoy it, but this is particularly is M3's pick. So, M3, why don't you give us a few words about uh, 9 to 5? Working 9 to 5. <laughs> My uh, my mom brought this movie home and we watched it. And for the first time, I think I was like five or six years old. For the first time, I, I that's how I got introduced into. Lee. I'm gonna say her name wrong. Um, uh, the incredible shrinking woman, Dolly Parton, and the gentleman down below who also went and played a bunch of other movies. Uh, Cloak and Dagger was my favorite of his movies. And uh, but this, this movie just brought back a lot of memories. And I didn't know it came out in 1980, and that's why I just picked it when I started scrolling through what movies actually came out in 1980. This is one of my one of my top tens. That's it. Nice. Uh, Curtis, any oh. words on nine to five? Oh, I liked it. I remember seeing it as a kid and laughing, you know, the them tying up the boss and stuff, <laughs> all that jazz and um, trying to get away with, you know, <laughs> getting back at the boss. And stuff. <laughs> it was just a good movie. It was a good little, even yeah. as a little kid, I, I, I was laughing at it. Yeah, my personal favorite part is um, the fantasy sequence where they all get their revenge on him, like in the dream. Yes. <laughs> like that was really great. I mean, watching Dolly Parton hogtie Dabney Coleman is uh, pretty great. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, if we're being honest, Dolly Parton in 1980 could have hogtied me. I wouldn't have fought it off at all. Right. right. Uh, Lily Tomlin, hilarious. Uh, and Jane Fonda, what a goddess, man. Barbarella, man. Yes. Ed, how about you, my friend? Well, um, a little known fact that Dolly Parton, they needed they needed the song 9 to 5 in the film. And when she went to her trailer, she was um, she was looking for a certain sound. And she started like doing her fingernails like this. And that's how she came up with kind of the ticker tape sound of the song. And that actually became the beat for it. And so there's some useless music trivia stuck in my head. Now you know. But it was a great film. I enjoyed it. This is a time when we used to make comedies instead of rehashing all the good stuff that's already been beaten to death like we do these days. So some originality and a, just a lot of fun. Nine to five was great. Nice. Moto, how about you? No, oh, I absolutely love this movie. I think every time it was on cable as a kid, I was watching it, you know, just having one of those things. If I'm scrolling, it's there. I'm going to watch it. Cause it was, it was, it was hilarious. Um, and it was during that time of that woman's movement, you know, where women finally have some kind of a power, you know what I mean? Not just a secretary, you know what I mean? She's a, she's now a career woman. So it was, it was right at that time when women were really going strong in the uh, corporate America, if you will. So it showed them, it showed the audience, you know, this, this woman's liberation from a typical male chauvinistic boss, you know what I mean? And how the movie pans out is um, it actually being pretty damn funny at the end. Minus two points for Moto. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Agreed on all counts, my friend. Agreed on all counts. And uh, But cause, as good as it is, only one person picked it, so it winds up in the rank of E. So moving on, the next movie here, this is uh, Seems Like Old Times from Neil Simon, uh, starring Goldie Hawn, Chevy Chase, and Charles Grodin. Um, the movie poster, like, I don't know if you guys, that does not look like Goldie Hawn to me. Or Chevy Chase. But, you know, what are you going to do? It's a, it's a movie poster. That doesn't look um, like Charles Grodin uh, as well. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right? I mean, the only one they got right is, is uh, the dog. Chevy. <laughs> but, uh, Ed, this is, your, this is your pick, so uh, why don't you give us a few words? There, well, there, there were a few that I had honorable mentions on that, that didn't make my list. And this one almost got booted out, but I'm glad it didn't. And whenever I think of this film, I just think of, like, pure joy. This is when Chevy Chase was still funny, still relevant in a funny kind of way. And, and I just remember having a lot of really good feelings around this film. 
it's a Neil Simon film, so it's brilliantly written, um, and it just was so clever and just the back and forth, and Charles Grodin putting up with him and just Chevy Chase. It's, it's and Goldie Hawn. It's just a great chemistry, and and it's it's kind of the kind of comedies we need to get back to making too. Just really good, solid stuff. Curtis. Yes. Have you ever seen this movie? Do you? Yes. Well, what do you have to say about it? Oh, wait a minute. No, I haven't. You haven't? No. All right. So Curtis has no opinion on this one. Um, I, I think it was pretty good. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, it, the, the thing that it's crazy because the, the dialogue that sticks out in my head the most was that the that uh, they had to hire caterers because the maid was getting her feet scraped? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> like it was hilarious. It, it was really really good. Uh, you know, this was uh, back in the time. I think Chevy Chase and Goldie Hawn did like three movies together. Um, my favorite of which was Over the Rainbow, but uh, this one was a very close second. M three, have you ever seen this film? I haven't, but I love Goldie Hawn. The girl is amazingly beautiful. I, I absolutely adore her. Um, Chevy Chase was a really good fucking uh, component to uh, Saturday Night Live, and uh, he, he's a great comedian. I, I like him a lot. I've never seen him. Sorry. Very good. I was going to say, I'm definitely a fan of those two, so I'm going to watch it. I, I think so. hey, you'll be watch night in the background there, Kurt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fabulous. How about you, Moto? Never seen it. Never seen it. All right. Well, then we shall move on. And uh, again, this was only picked by one person, so it is a ranked E. Our third pick is another M3 pick. It's nice. the Nude Bomb, which was like the movie version of Get Smart, if I'm correct. M3, you care to say a few words about the Nude Bomb? Yeah, my, my dad brought this movie home, <laughs> and we fucking watched it, and I was like, what the heck? And my dad just got a kick out of it. It was just kind of uh, funny, and it definitely was uh, Get Smart-esque, 100%. But uh, one of my one of my scenes that I know it sounds pretty gay, but there's a nude bomb that goes off, in the, even it's in the trailer, where there's a bunch of football guys huddled around in a circle like they're about ready to make a play on the field, and the nude bomb goes, nude bomb goes off, and all their pants just explode, so you see his butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> it was great dude great movie and i if i watched it again i'd probably see a lot of stuff that had memories but that's that's one of the memories that sticks out in my head it's been a very long time since i've seen it that's all. nice curtis how about you my friend have you seen this film no i have not seen it i'm gonna want to watch this one as well now <laughs> but i've never seen it i've never heard of it and um now i'm really curious about it so yeah, I haven't seen this film either. Uh, however, I do. I have watched a few scenes from it uh, in preparation for this. And um, the fact that, like, his boss is like the bad guys getting away, go after him, and his desk turns into a pursuit vehicle. He's, like, rolling down the street on his desk, chasing a car. It's pretty, pretty hilarious. Uh, yeah, it's something that I will probably eventually watch. But uh, I haven't really seen it, so I don't really have much of an opinion. How about you, Ed? I've never seen it or heard of it. It's a very interesting concept. I feel like there's something missing in my childhood. Maybe it, it's been regressed from my memory. I don't know. But <laughs> um, I'll have to check it out, I guess. But I, <laughs> I've never seen it, never heard of it. <laughs> Moto, how about you? Have you seen this? Unfortunately, no, I haven't seen nor heard of this movie. I'm just curious what the rating was on it because it sounds like it's a dirty, raunchy movie but with the uh, Don Adams, Agent 86. Well, I used to watch the TV show when it came up, but the nude bomb, it just sounds kind of raunchy. Do we have a rating on this movie? Agent 69? I'm just thinking. No. Uh, let me see. Okay. Does this? Yeah, it was PG. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. It was a crazy time, man. You can probably like, tell us a transition from the adults this. were PG rated. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, it was Indiana Jones that created the PG-13. Oh, uh, yeah, Temple of Doom, because <laughs> parents were upset. Yeah, yeah, they didn't realize, yeah. That's a topic for another story, for another That year. it is, that it is. Well, anyway, yeah. since this was only picked by one person, M3, it is E-ranked as well. 
We're gonna have a lot uh, of moving e-rails. on. I believe we have a moto pick next. The octagon. Moto, what have you got to oh, say about yeah. your pick, the octagon? <clears throat> okay, well, my grandfather was my hero. My grandfather loved his karate movies and his western movies. <clears throat> my grandfather was a big, huge fan of Chuck Norris. And I remember going to the to the Channer Drive-In where I had to put the speakers on the window and we watched this movie. And I, and it was awesome because it was it was definitely the turn of the of the decade, guys, where this movie was more more advanced, more than any other kung fu movie that I saw with my grandfather. If that makes any sense to you guys. This one was deeper, it was well written, very well acted. And um the the moral of the story is pretty damn good. Nice. Uh, Curtis, any any uh, words on the octagon? Um, Digital Caveman was really good in it. He was a badass. He was oh, thank, I was going to let him you. introduce himself once he got down to him. <laughs> uh, yeah, octagon, I watched it many a times when I was, when I was, you know, like, I don't know, I think I was like 12 or something because, you know, it was just badass, you know, violence and kicking ass and shit, you know. Um. But, you know, it, it was really good. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I think it was a blood factor for me, if I might. Nice. Just add that so, in there for me. For me, uh, I haven't seen this movie since 1980. Um, and pretty much all I remember is Chuck Norris versus Sci-Fi Ninja Assassins. Yes. <laughs> uh, I do remember enjoying it, but I couldn't really, you know. I mean, I know he was, like, protecting some rich heiress. Um, but that's about the extent of what I remember of the film. Uh, how about you, Ed? I've not heard of this film, but it is that. And who is that? Chuck Norris? Yeah. Oh, Chuck then, Norris. Then, then, yeah, put it on my list. I need to watch that. <laughs> so you need to yeah, watch Chuck Norris movie. versus sci-fi ninjas. <laughs> that's it. It, awesome. it was a turn. Dude. I'm telling you, this movie right here was an indicator of where the 1980s movies were going. I'm telling you. M3, how about you? Anything to say about uh, the Octagon? Um, Only that I have never seen it. Um, I've honestly never seen one Chuck Norris movie, if you could slap me in the face right now. (gasps) Blasphemous. I know. Wait, wait, wait. What? 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 All right, well, we're going to skip M3 because blasphemy. Uh, Digital, how about you, man? Have you you seen the Octagon? And before before you uh, talk about the Octagon, why don't you introduce yourself to the chat? Oh, hello, everyone. I'm Digital Caveman. I'm the one that blasted out all you on IG uh, to come and say hello and, and, and watch us. That's me. Uh, most of you probably already have, you know, you're aware of me. Who's this? New, new so. phone. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I'm Digital Caveman. I do lots of toy reviews. You can find me on Instagram at Digital Caveman with two N's, just like it's spelled uh, here on the screen. And YouTube.com at Digital Caveman, again, with two N's. Nice. All right. Sure. So about the Octagon, have you seen this movie? Okay. And if so, what do you think? I have seen it, but it has been so long ago. And that's that's going to be the case with a lot of these movies. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm vaguely aware of them. I have seen them, but it's, it's just been a long time. And... I have only two words to say about this movie. Chuck Norris. Amen. <laughs> that, that's it. That's all that needs to be said. Chuck yeah, Norris. I believe as we get uh, you know, into the higher tier films, uh, you know, there'll be there'll be things we have more to say about because uh, you know, they're more popular movies overall and, right. and you know, I'm sure we've seen them all more recently than uh, than we have these, or at least more times than we have these. Hey, but uh, moving on, moving on. Hey, brother, so the next you? film on the list. Uh, yeah, there you go. Octagon. Rank E because it was only picked by one. So the next film is another moto film. Oh, wow. Tom okay. Horn, starring Steve McQueen. <laughs> McQueen. Oh, dog. Go ahead. You can start again. I tell you, it's again going back to my grandfather, which is my, my role model. And it was Westerns and it was Kung Fu movies. We went to the theater to see this one. And in this one, this guy, this pretty much starts off um, 
the guy, let me give you a little backstory about Tom Horn because number one, I'm a huge Southwest history freak. I still love my Cowboys. I still love hitting these Rocky Mountains and finding artifacts and silver and gold. I'm just a cowboy at heart. But at the age of 16, he left Iowa, right? Goes down to Kansas, Dodge City, with all those guys from Tombstone. You know, Doc Masterson, the Wyatt brothers, or the Earp brothers, I mean, the um, Doc. Yeah. That, that, right. Anyway, so from there, he makes his way to Arizona. This is, a, this is at 1617. He gets a job on the Santa Fe Trail Line, travels to Arizona. He becomes a cowboy, which, you know, breaking horses and all that stuff. Rode shotgun for the stage lines, was an agent for the Pinkertons, and fought with the Rough Riders under Teddy Roosevelt. And anybody who knows me knows me that Teddy Roosevelt is my ultimate superhero. Um, and what made him famous, especially in Arizona, and for all of us, was that his, he was the one, um, the Calvary Scout, for capturing Geronimo during those damn bloody Apache Wars. And that was a long ass war. Um, that next to the Tewksbury feud. So, anyway, Tom Horn makes his way back into Colorado, where I'm at now. And he um, becomes sheriff. And he finds himself up in Wyoming, where he gets hired by these ranch cattle barons to protect their stock. There's too many rustlers. Uh, these, these rustlers are stealing everybody's stock. They got people coming in, homesteaders going on these ranchers' lands, putting up sheep, eating up all the grass, all this stuff. So they hired this guy. The marshal's in on it. Says, yeah, you know, this is, we're going to keep this under wraps, but whatever means necessary, you need to do to take care of it, stop the stealing, stop the thieving. You know what I mean? He's getting paid 200 bucks a head back then. Some 600 because of how big. The, the it was well the fucked up thing is is that he comes in he comes into town one day and the big the cattle baron said you know we've got it it's time now that all this shit's done we've got to get rid of him we gotta we gotta just not not like get rid of him like kill him but we gotta we gotta just we don't need him anymore how do we get rid of him and um because it's it's kind of like that damn Yellowstone show, I swear, because all these cattle barons decide they're going to set up Tom Horn through the sheriff that um, to make a report saying that, you know, the, the sheriff says, hey, you um, little 15-year-old, I think his name was Johnny, I can't remember his name, 15-year-old Johnny Nolan, I think it was Johnny Nolan, um, shot 213 yards by a 45, uh, 1876 45, and then if we, anybody knows guns, those are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful guns. But anyway, so this kid dies, and they pin it on Tom Horn. Now, Tom Horn's at the marshal's. He's at the bar. He's having himself some whiskey. This marshal that set it all up with the cattle barons come over to the bar, says, hey, um, we need to talk about the, the Johnny Nolan. Why don't we go someplace where it's more private, like over in my office? So they go over to his office. They got a guy in the back writing a note for note words that are said, and they twisted his words around because Steve McQueen Dogovich says, Hey, a 4560 at 213 yards was has a rainbow arc. That's a hell of a shot. And he goes, If I would have, if I would have made that shot, you know, he didn't say I didn't make that shot. He said, the sheriff said, Did you kill John Nolan? He goes, If I did, it would have been a hell of a shot. And the worst mistake of my life. And it was that quote that the guy in the background wrote down that, that put him in trial. They hung his ass. His brother came and got his body. He's, he's buried right here in Boulder, Colorado. What? And this is, this is, dude, I'm telling you, I've been to his grave site. And it's just, I'm a huge Western buff. I love my Southwest. And I highly recommend everybody checking out this movie. There's so much more history, but just this little snippet right here of the, this movie is about the end of Tom Horn more than anything. You know what I mean? I highly recommend it, and I will stop rambling because I could go on and on about this movie. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, none of us need to watch the movie now. You, you've yeah. told us the whole thing. <laughs> you told us, yeah. Uh, it's Curtis, a true you story. This film? I like your passion for it. Yeah, i never seen it, but it sounds really, really interesting. I, now I want to see it, so it's another one I'm going to add to my list. It's in it's in the books, bro. I, uh, so I also have never seen it. Uh, I, you know, Steve McQueen versus Cattle Rustlers seems interesting enough. I will eventually get to watching it. Uh, how about you, Ed? 
I've never heard of it, never seen it, but I'm interested in it now. So, M3, any words on uh, Tom Horn? Uh, no, uh, but sounds great. And it also sounds like the first rule of the Democratic Party took took care of their business trying to get rid of somebody. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. All right, uh, Digital, how about you, man? Uh, I'm with the rest of the panel. You know, I, I, I really haven't. I've, I haven't heard of this movie. I haven't seen this movie, but I, I'm definitely going to find out where it's at so I can take a gander at it because, uh, you know, I love a good Western. Yes, sir. All yes, right. Sir. Well, then we're going to move on from that. And uh, again, only Moto picked it, so it is an E-rank movie. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, we have a movie picked by a panelist who's not here yet. This was uh, one of Bullwinkle's picks, uh, oh, Urban yeah. Cowboy. That um, was such a good movie. That's what he said. John Travolta at the rodeo, as far as I know. It's, Curtis, you have anything to say about this one? It's, yeah, it's actually, a, I watched it as a, you know, like a seven, eight-year-old whenever it came out. Like, you know, it, it caught my attention. It was it was a, good to watch, so... Um, I liked it. It was a bunch of drama, you know, and cowboys and mm-hmm. bars and stuff, you know, that type of thing. I'm not going to spoil it too much for uh, everybody. So, but well, I don't oh. think it's a problem if you spoil it, bro. The movie's like 44 years old. Yeah, Bullwinkle is very, very fond of this movie. He likes it a lot. That's all I can tell you about what that I know that he would have said. But um, but yeah, you got uh. I forgot her name. Deborah Winger's in it. Yeah. And uh, John Travolta. And um, it's, you know, it's basically like <laughs> um, people dating or whatever, and they get in fights and arguments and stuff. It's, you know. It's, yeah, I, I honestly, person, I haven't seen this movie myself since the early 80s. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't really remember it. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Ed. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, I remember watching this as a kid, and honestly, this was at the time it was touted as basically Saturday Night Fever with cow boots because just like uh, Saturday Night Fever brought in disco or really made it hot, this made country music hot in the 80s. And, 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 you know, and, yeah, I do remember yeah, some line dancing. Not, in it. Not, not to interrupt you too much, but what's a cow boot? What did I say? You said cow boot. <laughs> what was I supposed to say? Um, what oh, are they? Cow- cowboy boots. Look, cowboy uh, boots. Cow- I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. A Did cow- you know, to answer your question, a <laughs> cow boot is what the police put on your cows when uh, you don't pay the ticket. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> now, we, now we know who the, now we know uh, who the narc is. <laughs> but, uh, oh, man, it was a fun cowboy movie. And uh, John Travolta, was, he was still on fire then. You know, you, know, you had what? Saturday Night Fever, you had Grease, you had Urban Cowboy. He was still kind of a thing back then in the early 80s and still pretty powerful. Oh, yeah. And if Olivia Newton-John showed up in this, walked into that bar, it would have been over with, I'm telling you. It would have been awesome. Well, if Olivia Newton-John was in this, I'd have had a lot to say about it. Exactly. <laughs> and it had, a great, uh, it had a great soundtrack back in the day. Yes. Rob, hey, Rob78 said, Urban Cowboy, like, he must like it. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. M3, how about you, my friend? I've never seen it, but I like John Fulton. <laughs> nice. Moto, any words on uh, Urban Cowboy? One of, it was one of my, uh, it was like number 12 on my list, dude. I love this movie. Absolutely love it. Um, I won't spoil it. I won't do what I did. I won't Tom Horn you on this one. <laughs> 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 but, uh, I mean, definitely check it out. It's real world relationship in my eyes. Um <laughs> It, uh, it's, it's just funny to me that the mechanical bull is more is life to these people more than say a real rodeo, which is hysterical. But um, you know, you got to have your gillies, you got to have your party, you got to have a place where you can have your beer and you can ride your mechanical bulls and get down with the ladies. Yeah, if you like, watching. it is a relationship movie and a growth movie for the main character John Travolta and. So yeah, I'd give it. I'd give it a nine out of ten. Wow, that's high praise. 
If Did we you know, know, I really, different. really enjoyed it. I mean, uh, it was, I, I, again, this is this is one of those that I I know I've seen like when I was a, a, a small child. And, uh, you know, I, I just kind of remember bits and pieces of it, like, a, you know, dancing in the bar and mechanical bulls. And, yeah. and really the, the bits and pieces of it I remember kind of reminds me of what, you know, the country music scene was in the 90s in like the, you know, those early to mid 90s. Hey, you know that that's kind of that, that, that's, that's kind of the mindset. Right. You know, it's kind of like the same thing. Can I interject going real on. quick? Just I've just looked up the soundtrack, and y'all know some of the songs like "Looking for Love" in all the wrong uh-huh. places. Oh so yes, that was big. Um, Anne Murray was big back then. Could I have this dance? That was kind of a slower song, but you had yeah. you had um, "Stand by Me" done by Mickey Gilly, which is interesting. Uh, and of course, uh, a southern favorite, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. He went down to Georgia. By yeah. Charlie Daniels. Yeah. And uh, Bonnie Raitt was on it, J.D. Souther and Linda Ronstadt. I mean, it goes on. So it was like I mean, it's an awesome soundtrack. I mean, for 1980, it was a kick ass movie. Yeah, John Travolta had his more, that's probably his first, I would say, his first serious role, maybe. Uh, I don't know, man. I would say Saturday Night Fever was a pretty serious role. That was serious, but it was different in his acting. Y- y'all want to know what my favorite Travolta film is? Phenomenon. Boy in the Bubble? Phenomenon. Look who's talking. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're not in that year yet, so let's move on. <laughs> Face up. Next movie on Gage. the list, uh, that one again, only picked by one, so it's an e rank movie. Next movie on the list, this is one of Moto's Used Cars, starring Kurt Russell. Motor, right. what do you got to say about used cars? Again, this is at the time when we got the assignment. Forgive me, chat, but I thought it was movies that you saw in 1980, not just your favorite 1980 movie. So my list is all the movies that I actually saw with my family in theaters. Now, if you notice on that screenshot, see that swirl cactus? And if you look in the far background, it shows those spires. Well, that's actually Utah. In background, background. Arizona doesn't have that. That's on the Utah side. Wow. But where that's the world cactus is, it was filmed in our neighborhood. It was filmed in East Mesa, Arizona. And I remember going over to my Nana and Tata's house on my dad's side, and they lived in the Twin Knolls district where they were filming this movie. And we would go and we would stand, we, we, we would watch. Watch them do like little skits at this car lot, little skits at that car lot. You know, they made everybody stay in the back, but it was cool as a kid. I mean, we're talking, I was probably six, seven, holding my Nana's hand and uh, trying to uh, watch them film this movie. And then the movie comes out and uh, my mom and my uh, stepdad went and saw this movie. They said it was okay for me to watch. So I went back with them and we watched it again with the entire family, like a family movie, because it shows so much of our East Mesa, Apache Junction, where we're from. And um, so, yeah, it always has a place in my heart. And it is pretty damn funny. Nice. Curtis, anything to say about used cars? Never seen it or heard about it till just, you know, when uh, Moto Set talked about it. But um, All right. Um, I have seen this movie. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Um, I remember like the premise of it. It was two different used car lots at war with each other, continuously sabbing, sabotaging each other. They were brothers. Yeah, almost every car that rolled off the lot had something falling off of it as it left. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, lots of funny comedy and uh, a couple good explosions. Not bad. Uh, Ed, how about you? I've heard of it, never seen it, and and. I could be wrong about this, but didn't Snoop Dogg like make a remake or something of it, a loose remake, or was that Car Wash? Maybe that was Car Wash. I'm thinking. Yeah, I think that was Car Wash. That was Car Wash. Okay. Then yeah, I know nothing about this film. All right, M3, how about you? Um, uh, shout out to Kurt Russell for inserting his penis inside of Goldie Hawn. Uh, that's a great feat, and I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't think he for, used his feet. taking it uh, to the worst possible place. Uh, D- DC, how about you, man? I, I I do not recall this movie, but when y'all said it's like two car lots at war with each other, that, that kind of, I don't know if I'm thinking of another film maybe. So I may at some point have seen this, but, you know, it's Kurt Russell, so. 
You know, cool. all well, I see I one like of the brothers Russell. dies, but the other brother doesn't know that he dies. So the used car lot is doing everything they can to pretend that he's still alive so they can stay in business to save the used car lot is so that, the asshole brother that, doesn't win. Car, used cars at Bernie's? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. They, they, they did weekend at Bernie at one point. They sure as the hell did. Hey, I'll be back in one second. Right. And uh, Kurt Russell says, uh, trust me about 50 times in this film. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a know, used, car used car salesman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's little nuggets like that. It's just those little nuggets like that that I pick up on, and I just think it's awesome. Nice. All right, so moving on. That one uh, only picked by one, so it is also an E-ranked movie. This is crazy. <laughs> and next, this was one of my picks. Damn it. Uh, and I am the only one that picked this. I almost picked uh, <laughs> But Xanadu. Xanadu, in my opinion, is proof that uh, everybody did a massive ton of drugs in the 70s and it came out on the filmmaking in the 80s. Um, lots of crazy fluorescent lighting and neon everywhere. Uh, lots of, um, you know, shredded fluorescent clothing, uh, which was a big trend in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Uh, but more importantly, uh, Olivia Newton John in leg warmers and roller skates. Uh, there, there's a scene in it where, um, Gene Kelly, his last movie, by the way, Gene Kelly, um, has a duet with Olivia Newton-John done in the style of like the old USO shows. It's that, that track is a masterpiece. Um, electric light orchestra, uh, worked with Olivia Newton-John on the entire soundtrack. It is amazing. It's one of the best, uh, soundtracks of the eighties, in my opinion. And, uh, it's all about an artist uh, who's bored with his work because all he has to all he gets to do at work is um, duplicate uh, you know he has to paint album covers in larger scale to like hang in windows of record stores because back then they couldn't just print out posters I guess but he comes across the uh, an album cover for the seven muses and Olivia Newton John is on the cover uh, she's one of the seven muses she's one of uh, Zeus's daughters. So it's got Greek mythology mixed into all this, like further proving how much drugs they were on when they made it. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's a, it's just a fantastic fantasy film. That sounds like Marvel. Uh, set, in, uh, set in uh, California in the 80s. You know, the the most decadent decade of, of California's uh, existence. And I personally love it. And Olivia Newton-John was my first crush. Uh, Curtis is not oh, yeah. here right now, so Ed, what do you have you seen Xanadu, and what do you think of it? I, I saw it, and my sister had the album, and I would kind of sneak it away from her so I could listen to EOL, uh, ELO. Well, I was probably listening to E, uh, whatever, <laughs> Electric Light Orchestra, <laughs> and uh, no, ELO. didn't appreciate how good their music is, and I really do now. I mean, just the breadth of their oh, music God, is yes. a- amazing. Um, even when you get up to the Traveling Wilburys, Tom Petty, all that wouldn't have happened without Jeff Lynn. He's a musical genius guru. And but, you know, you had songs like because for me, music is a big part of my life and movies, they're all intertwined. So magic that what a great song that is. If you listen to that song like in stereo, it's just so such a beautiful, haunting kind of melody. And there's some really good songs in there. It's a great soundtrack. The film, it doesn't hold up. I don't think <laughs> if you if I watched it now, I know it would be really hokey. But you got to You got to look at things not in 2024 eyes. You kind of have to look at it in the time it was created and the, and, and the situations and the culture around it. And then you'll appreciate the film much more for what it is. And it is a good film. Like I said, it was an honorable mention for me. It almost made the list. But um, Zan- yeah, I mean, for me, before we go on, uh, I, I just want to say I agree with you. Magic is the best song in the in the film. However, a very close second for me is Don't Walk Away. The one where they do the animated segment where the where Kira and and uh and the the Sunny uh cartoon characters. Yeah. And sure. they turn into birds and they turn into fish and it's done in like a Disney animation style. It's it's amazing. Uh M3, have you ever seen Xanadu? I haven't, but I like Olivia Newton-John. And to be honest, the only movie that I can relate her to is Grease. And so I'd like to take the next step and see that this one might hold, especially now that you mentioned that there's some animation in it. That's great. Moto, have you ever seen Xanadu? I have. Again, it was one of those movies that was on cable all the time. And I did not go to the theater to uh, 
see it, so I could I didn't put on my list. Forgive me for not understanding in the beginning. This is definitely an honorable mention. And as an adult, I would love to smoke a primo and watch this movie and trip the fuck out. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I was but, uh, uh, in, as a you? kid, but as a kid, I'm watching it and I'm digging all the special effects. I'm digging the love story. I'm digging the fact of this mystical angel that this guy is. He can't stop drawing. He's in love with her. Who is she? What is she? Yeah, I definitely got to smoke a primo to this one and watch it. Nice. Digital, how about you? Uh, I have seen it again. It's it's one of those that I saw when, when I was kind of young. And, you know, I maybe have seen it once, maybe twice. And, you know, I you remember that thing every State. Friday night, dude. You watch it every <laughs> Friday night. Don't lie. <laughs> yeah, I remember roller skates and, and you know, like uh, the, the colorful streaks and neon lights. And so, yeah, you know, yeah. that's, that's what I remember. Of, and, and you know, some songs from the soundtrack. That's that's what I remember of Xanadu. Well, and, and you know, I, I should probably mention, because it's my my pick, the, the, the plot of this thing is the muses, they show up to artists uh, in, their, in their time of despair, like when they're at their lowest. And yes. all the way back during World War II, the very same muse, Kira, played by uh, Olivia Newton-John, showed up for Gene Kelly and was his muse. So when Sonny meets Gene Kelly on the beach, the two of them come together and they build a nightclub and they call it Xanadu. That's the plot. And they were inspired to do it by Kira. Sorry, Curtis, go ahead. Do you have anything to say about Xanadu? Um, I remember as a little kid, I was like maybe six years old and it didn't catch my attention. So I didn't really watch it. But now I definitely want to watch it. Well, all right. And on that note, we shall move on. I was the only one to pick this, so it is an E-ranked film. Now, I believe, yes, we're on to movies picked by two people. Oh, all uh, right. Chicken Chong's next movie. This was picked by um, by Moto and M3. Now, I'm going to spare M3 go and figure. let Moto go first because M3, uh, you know, could probably use a little refresher because while we were talking about it, he was mixing it up with the first one a lot, so... <laughs> We'll let Moto talk about it first, and then we'll let M3 talk. Go ahead, Moto. This one is great. It's got PB Herman in it. <laughs> you got to take it. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's, it's Cheech and Chong. I don't need to say what the movie's about. We know there's some great skits, shit that we can relate to. Um, I went with my mom to see this in the drive in in the back of her conversion van as they think about that i'm in the back of a conversion van with the speakers on the bed that where the couch that turns into a bed and i'm in a drive-in and i'm watching this movie right here as an eight-year-old kid and i'm laughing my ass off dude the fucking he's acting like he's swimming in a swimming pool and shit because his tarp rips and i i won't give you more spoilers but yeah it's it's definitely on my list of great great movies it's part of who i am now well, you don't have to worry about spoilers. Like I said, these movies are all 44 years old. So, <laughs> yeah, but just want to go back you? and revisit what, what them. You know what I mean? Um, but Chong is one of the dirtiest hippie motherfuckers you could ever. They, they put that, they plastered <laughs> him with that. And that's great. He's got that bike with the exhaust floating out the fucking window. <laughs> <laughs> <Of these roses. laughs> uh, Win- Winslow, Winslow was in it. Uh, the the guy that does all the he was in Police Academy does all the fucking voices. Yeah, Michael movies. Winslow. Michael oh Winslow. yeah, yeah. And, and when they go into the uh, to the uh, precinct and there's that old man that's just dying of laughing and fucking Winslow sitting right there and shit, Charles sitting in between them. It was great. It was a good movie. Um, I do mix it up with the first one. Hot um, and Smoke is my favorite, but next movie is pretty good too. That's all I got. Nice, Curtis. Any uh, any thoughts on Cheech and Chong's next movie? <laughs> Cheech and Chong, man. Right? Right? It was fun as a kid. I thought it was funny as shit. Somebody took a hit. <laughs> now I, I believe that uh, it, it, this is the one where where Chong smokes an actual roach, right? Yeah, a beetle. He smashes it on the counter and stuffs it in the bowl. Uh huh. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, you know, the Cheech and Chong are Cheech and Chong to me. You know, they're, they're, with the exception of the Corksican brothers, they're all that same brand of comedy. And if you like it, you like it. Yeah. Ed, how about you? I 
we had HBO at some point. I don't know when we got it. We didn't have it when everybody else got it, but we got it later. I, I mix up all of my Cheech and Chong's movies because they're all the same, really. <laughs> you know what you're there for, right? Yeah. And uh, they were just hilarious. They were fun. I, I was probably too young to know what the heck they were smoking or even care, but it, the humor was just hilarious. The whole They're just Cheech and Chong. They're geniuses, and, you know, they're just Amen. Funny. Right. Uh, DC, how about you? Uh, this is one of those that I'm ashamed to say I have never seen Cheech and Chong's next movie. I've seen like bits and pieces of it, but but I've never like made it a point to sit down and just, you know, watch them straight through. All right. So I have a question. Is is this the one where the, they had the van made of weed? No. That was up in smoke, right? Yep. All right, all right. All right, well, this one uh, was picked by two people, so this is our first D-ranked film on the list. Moving on, uh, another one picked by two, Smokey and the Bandit, and this was by Digital Caveman and Ed. So, uh, Ed, if you want to start off here, um, say a little bit about Smokey and, and the Bandit. Yeah, and Caveman, you can jump in any time you want to on this. Um, Dom DeLuise was in this one, correct? Oh, yeah. Was, okay, good, good. Because yeah, yeah, it, was, you put, it was this one. Anytime you put Dom DeLuise in a movie, especially with Burt Reynolds and, and Jackie Gleason, you just know it's going to be like explosive fun. And this, there, and Jerry Reed was in this as well. You know, um, what could you not say about the 80s wouldn't be half of what they were without Burt Reynolds? He was like the it guy. He was um, so funny and charismatic. Sally Field, she was, you know, beyond beautiful, still is. And uh, you just put every all of that together. It was just a lot of fun. And, you know, who who didn't play uh, cops and robbers growing up, you know, and running from the police and your little Hot Wheels cars and all that stuff? I mean, I, I know I did, you know. And so, you know, it's just part of growing up. It's kind of like part of our DNA, I think, <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit. So you can never go wrong with a Smokey and the Bandit film. Uh, digital, how about yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think Ed pretty much said it all. I mean, you put Burt Reynolds and, and Dom DeLuise in a film together, and you've got something you're going to laugh your ass off to, you know, pretty much any scene that they're in together. And, you know, I, I, I love when they're together. Uh, in Smoking the Bandit 2, the Cannonball Run films. Yes. And uh, Stroker Ace. I mean... It, it's it's just gold anytime that those guys are together. And then, you know, you throw Jackie Gleason in there just for good measure. And uh, you know, I'm not sure where that placed. I think it was in the top ten films of that year, the top ten grossing films of that year. I mean, cause it, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't get any funnier than than putting those guys together. And you know, I may have never put this together before. Um, but I feel like Dukes of Hazard was kind of loosely inspired by Smokey and the Bandit. If you think about it, you know you have you have Boss Hog. Oh, I can see that. You know, I could see it. Boss Hog yep. being Jackie Gleason's character <laughs> or uh, Roscoe P. Coltrane. <laughs> and and, yeah, and I, I don't forget Enos, did. right? <laughs> and then you know, uh, so Curtis, do you have anything to say about Smokey and the Bandit too? <laughs> But first, you Curtis, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll skip Curtis for now. Um, oh, wait, there he is. Yes, there he is. Yes, Smokey and the Bandit 2 was great. I, I, I still watch it at least once a year, maybe twice a year. My favorite part's the... the uh, All the semi-trucks and the police tr cars <laughs> scene. That was great. Yeah, that, that yeah, I, I agree. Smokey and the Bandit Two is fantastic. Um, you know, I I kind of felt bad for that elephant on a couple of occasions. Yes, but uh, I do love the the scene where uh, all the semi trucks create a bridge for Bandit and uh, and uh, Snowman. Um, and uh, Jackie Gleason is an amazing villain in this as Buford T. Justice. 
Uh, I love that he calls in his brothers who all happen to be captains of other police departments, <laughs> including the Canadian Mounties. Like, come on, man. If that ain't the it's South. hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, M3, yeah. how about you? Anything to say about Smokey and the Bandit 2? You're muted, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, so Smoking about it. I, I've seen one, I think. I don't know if I've seen two. Sally Field was hot all the way up until fucking Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, that's all I got to say about it. All right, Moto. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, loved it. Loved it. It was another one of those uh, movies. It was, there was a lot of kind of those movies at the time. Um, <clears throat> it was good. It was, it was good. I'll, I'll give it props, you know. Nice, nice. All right, so Sorry, moving guys. on, Smokey and the Bandit 2, picked by two people, so it gets a D rank. The next film on the list uh, was also picked by two people. Uh was picked by me and by Digital Caveman. Um, this movie, uh, I'll start, uh, The Final Countdown. Uh, this is a movie where a 1980 Nimitz-class aircraft carrier stocked with F-14s goes back to 1941 just before Pearl Harbor. Um, and it's it's basically a moral dilemma. Uh, it's got um, uh, Martin Sheen and um, Kirk Douglas, uh, like the main stars of it. And uh, basically it's a moral dilemma because they could easily stop every bad thing that happened at Pearl Harbor. But if they do, will it alter the future? Wow. Um, the effects were pretty decent for the time. The time portal that the ship goes through looked pretty good for a 1980 film. Um, and yeah, it's just, uh, you know, if you want to watch F-14s take down Japanese zeros, this is the movie for you. Uh, Digital, how about you, man? Uh, you know, I, I think you covered it all. This is one of those movies that I've seen, uh, you know, maybe four or five times. And, uh, you know, I, I really picking the movies just from 1980 was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be because it's, it's, you know, uh, the majority of the stuff is stuff that I've seen, you know, a little bit and, and then maybe not have watched, you know, more than one time. And this one, of course, I've watched a couple of times and, you know, Kirk Douglas and Martin Sheen, you know, that's a powerhouse duo. And just, you know, like you were saying, the moral dilemma of it, you know, do we stop Pearl Harbor? Do we change history? And, you know, that that would be a difficult decision to make. Right. Right. Because how many people are never born if you make that not happen? Right. Because exactly. none of those sailors die and they all marry different women. You know what I mean? So or. It's like, or or you know, uh, what if what if not just that, but what if it it changes the fact that America doesn't get into World War II until you know the Nazis have have conquered all of Europe and just you know beaten the crap out of Russia and 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 you know just you know stuff like that. I mean, because um, without Pearl Harbor, I don't you know we really would not have gotten involved. Yeah, that was but at least point. until things were 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 way too far along for us to do much about it. Yeah, uh, this uh, is a much better movie about Pearl Harbor than Pearl Harbor was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> uh, Curtis, what about you, man? Anything to say about the final countdown? Um, I haven't seen it. I want to see it, but um, I thought the Pearl Harbor movie was really good. All right, moving on. Uh, how about how about you, Ed? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know about that Pearl Harbor comment on that movie. That was yeah, right. Um, I hated that Love because they, it's like turning Titanic into a love story, and it wasn't. Uh, but anyway, anyway, um, this this movie always reminded me of the Philadelphia Experiment because I think it's kind of similar. But um, my thoughts on it. And this, you could make a real serious film about this that could be a real good thriller. I just had the idea, what if you prevented 9-11? You know, you could put a lot of different, what if you prevented the Civil War? You know, what if you prevented whatever? You could just drop your little, you know, part that pivotally changed America. Right, would you go back in time and kill Hitler as a right. baby? You know, would you kill Th baby Thanos? You know, we've been there. Um, so, I don't know. There's, yeah, this, this, this 
almost was a three, three for, or, or I guess a C on this list, because I almost picked this, but I had to kick it out begrudgingly for another film that I thought deserved to be in my top ten more. But uh, I've got respect for this film. I remember watching it as a kid, and I just thought it gave me. A, I like the the like you said that what the F 16s going against the Japanese Zeros. That was so cool. Just the idea of that uh, people out of time, essentially out of different times, fighting and. It's it's almost like a what if comic, you know. I, I love those scenarios, so it's a great film, and and everybody. Yeah, right, because because with one Nimitz class aircraft carrier, they could have taken out all of Hitler's the Hitler's entire yeah, exactly, army. Exactly, exactly. Uh, M three, how about you? Um, I haven't seen it, but it sounds like a really good movie. I do love the Philadelphia Experiment. I thought that was pretty good, good as well. It reminded me of that as well. Um, if uh, if you're given the the God given blessing to <sighs> alter a fucking event, do it. That's all. But what if it prevents your own birth? Doesn't matter. <laughs> all right. Uh, 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 Moto, how about you? I have never seen this movie, I'm sorry to say, but I'm going to check it out. All right. Well, and before I go ahead and move on to the next one, I'm just going to say I'm shocked not a single person went. All yes. right, so moving yes. on. Day, it predates that. So. This was uh, this was again picked by two people, so it uh, it gets a D ranking. Uh, the next one is another one picked by two people. This was picked by Ed and by Curtis. So Curtis, why don't you start us off on the Fog, starring Adrian Barbo? Yes, the Fog was. I don't know. I was young when I seen it. So it scared the crap out of me. It was pirates. It was ghost pirates from the fog that came in rolling in um it had adrian in it it had uh, jamie in there jamie lee curtis um there are some other people and i can't think offhand right now but um it was for me as a kid it, it stuck in my head it, it was it was good as a kid i still watch it from time to time um <sighs> oh you know, yeah john carpenter it's a John Carpenter movie, obviously. Yeah, this was his follow-up to Halloween. Yeah, with Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> and look at that, Janet Lee, John Hausman. These are like some at the time some great actors. Yes. And uh, uh, Ed, or I'm sorry, uh, this is uh, digital. You were the other one that picked this, right? Oh no, it was Ed. Oh Ed, no, go yeah, ahead, no, it me. Yeah, it was me, and um, I, I can't really improve much on what what he said. I know there was a. Tom Welling from Smallville back in like 2008 or somewhere around there, he did, um, they did a sequel to this and it was terrible. Uh, 2004. 2004, thank you. Um, but yeah, I remember this is one of those films from when I was, I was ten, probably 10 years old when this came out. And I remember how scary it was. And then later on in life, you're like, dude, it's just the fog coming in. But the way they yeah. presented it in John Carpenter's direction, so good. Yeah. And and you really believed it at the time. You, I really believed it. And and it was a very scary film, and it holds up. It, it still holds up to this day. It's a little dated, but it, the story holds up. And it's it's just a good, a good, solid horror film. I love it. Nice. Yeah, see, for me, uh, like, the thing that I, I kind of enjoyed about this horror film, it was kind of a it had a little bit of a jaws element to it where you didn't see the pirates right away all you saw was a hook right you saw fog and then a hook you know for like the first half of the film so you didn't know what was in the fog you know uh and that was a you know it was a nice little um you know way to keep it suspenseful uh m3 what about you have you seen the fog and what did you think I, I've never seen it. I only seen the one that uh, came out if from uh, 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 the newer one. I think it was. I think it was the fog, right? And the, the guy's got to kill his family at the end. Oh, I thought that, that was a supermarket one movie. Yeah, but no, I've never seen a profit. No, he's thinking about the mist. Yeah, he's thinking oh, about man. the mist. Okay, yeah. Oh, I, 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 All right. So no opinion for M three. Uh, uh, Moto, what about you? Same. Sorry. I love horror and I know I've seen it with my mom, but I don't, I just don't remember the movie. All right. We'll move on to DC. DC, what do you think? Uh, I, I don't believe that I have ever seen this movie, 
But you know, I, I got mad respect for for John Carpenter. He's done some some good stuff well over said. the decades, and you know Adrian Barbeau and Jamie Lee Curtis. So, well, I will say know. it's a little dated, but it is definitely worth the viewing. Uh, so check it out, people. Cool. All well, right, so King King is was, uh, is this so that one again is a D ranked film. Now we're moving on to movies that were selected by a few more people. So next we have My Bodyguard, selected by M3, myself, and Curtis. Um, Curtis, you're at the top of the food chain there, so why don't you start? I have not seen this in such a long time, but I remember watching it multiple times on cable as a kid, and I loved it. And it was, you know, it was that heartfelt good story of, of you know, somebody helping somebody out you know type thing in school and stuff like that it was great it was great yeah it was a really good it was a feel-good movie yeah. um and, and and i have to say it wasn't just you know the little guy getting help by uh you know adam baldwin's character because they helped each other you know because right. adam Bald baldwin he was a big tough guy but he was an outcast you know right and Matt Dillon was a complete asshole in this film, and not just to the to the the, the star. Yeah. He was an asshole to pretty much everybody. Like the girl that's on the movie poster next to him, like Matt Damon's like, hey, do you want to go to the movies? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, have fun while you're there, bitch. You know? so, yeah. And, and, you know, Matt Dillon, like, honestly, like, I don't understand, like, because I grew up in the 80s. And I, I've never seen bullying on the level that 80s movies depict bullying, you know, especially like Stephen King. Right. Like, he, you know, they, they made it look like the bullies were willing to kill people. And I never encountered bullies on that level. But uh, this movie was really fantastic, really good, feel good movie. And, uh, you know, at first he hires the guy, you know, Baldwin to be his uh, bodyguard, but they wind up being best friends. And it's it's just heartwarming. M3, you were the third one to pick this. How about you? Yeah, I was real young when I saw this. I think I was pre-first grade. My sister was a little bit older than me. She was born in 1969. This is one of the movies that she watched. And I remember being able to just sit there and watch it and think, wow, I'm never going to be a bully, right? And then yeah. you know, the whole thing with the the, the people that they chose and the interaction, the, it, the, it was perfect, great movie. If somebody turned it on right now, I'd say wait till after the show, I would watch it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, Ed, how about you? Any thoughts on uh, My Bodyguard? I feel like I've heard of it, but it feels like one of those films that I've totally forgotten. I'd probably enjoy it if I watched it, you know. But, yeah, I don't remember it. Moto, any thoughts from you? It was definitely honorable mention for me. It was another one of those shows that when it was on cable back in the day, especially during summer break, I was always watching it all the time. That little red-headed kid down there in the corner – on the side, that dude is hilarious, especially when he flips him the bird, because he ain't got to put up with none of the shit no more. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, his like, yeah, the main character's like a uh, small friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I love this movie very, very much. Very All good. Right, I you, recommend uh, it. How about you, DC? I, I don't believe that I've ever seen this movie, and. <clears throat> And y'all say the the main character, you know, he he got bullied. Is that that that's correct? Well, and the the main reason that he was the focus of Matt Dillon's bullying was because he was the one that like wouldn't kowtow to him, right? Like Matt Dillon would uh, pick something out of the garbage and say, "Eat this," and he'd throw it in his face instead, and then you get the shit kicked out of him. You know, uh, but yeah, because uh, he hires Adam Baldwin to protect him, but then Adam Baldwin winds up teaching him to defend himself, and it's just a it's a masterpiece. Yeah. But uh, picked by three of us, this movie is a C rank. And then the rebuilding of the motorcycle uh, has a significance too, you know. Yes, yes, because they ride it together, like both of them, one on the back, one on the front, and they both do both positions. It's uh, yeah, yeah, very cool. So next we have Popeye. And this was picked by Bull, who isn't here, M3, and Moto Viper. So uh, yeah, we're going to start with M3 on this one. M3, what do you think? Uh, what do you have to say about Popeye? 
it's, it's going to be about a minute and a half. But I'll try to make it shorter than that. But this movie right here, the first time I ever seen it, I remember being in a, in a neighborhood called Cameron Park. And we used to go to this place. My dad had a, my mom and dad had a restaurant over here called the Taco Station. And across the way, and there, and on that Taco Station, there was a, a guy that would do a little train. And he had, like, all the cars. And he would drive around this whole lot that had all these old school fucking buildings. Like, you can get your old school pictures in there. Remember how they put you with the shotgun or the rifle or whatever, the musket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all, like, kind of, like, not black and white. It was brown and, like, beige. Anyway. Yeah. There was a place across the street called Spanky's. And in Spanky's, they had... Uh, um, Peanut shells, or not peanut shells, but hay all over the ground. And you could walk in there, and they had an arcade, and they had a movie with the, when you pull out the bottom drawer, it had the three lights, the red, green, and blue light, and it would shine up on the fucking ship. Um, that movie was on and playing, and I, I remember watching it and going and playing Tron, coming back and watching it, and then later on when I was about six, my mom got it, and we, we, we were able to watch it. I love the movie. Shelly Duvall, shout out her, um, and Robin Williams, fucking best Popeye I could imagine. He did Great. All right, uh, Moto, how about you? Uh, well said, M3. I mean, let's think about the year. It's 1980. And look at look at the costuming. Look at the... Uh, what, what's it called? I guess it would be just costuming. I mean, the special effects, the, the, the story. Um, now, the one thing I did have a downside is that at eight years old, watching all the Popeye cartoons. This one wasn't more of the newer one. It was kind of a throwback to the even older one, Pop or Popeye ones. You know what I mean? That's the only negative thing I have to say about it. But the story, and you're right, Robin Williams, um, eating spinach at the end, twisting his arm, getting that octopus, her Bluto turns yellow. I mean, it was great, you know? But, um, when I started watching Popeye, his name wasn't Bluto. I think it was Brutus, wasn't it? Uh, yes. In the Bluto. Early yeah, running, yeah. Bluto yeah, yeah, something like that. So as a kid, I mean, think about it. You know, you're an eight-year-old kid, and you get this Bluto. And I was a little thrown back by that, you know, but I got the gist of it. And I, I absolutely was, hell yeah, I love this movie. Love this movie. In fact, sometimes when it's on Pluto TV, yeah, I'll put it on just so it's on in the background. Yeah, hell yeah. You know, there's so many great scenes, and it's a, it's kind of a musical, you know. And I love it when he's when he's saying goodnight to his me pappy, his me pappy's picture, you know. And then he hangs it up, and it's me pappy. <laughs> so, I mean, right, yeah, it's just for an eight, uh, for an eight year old kid, dude. Yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah, unfortunately, pappy was a bastard. Uh, Curtis, <laughs> how about you? Anything to say about Popeye? Yeah, as a kid, I loved it. I know it wasn't like. The greatest movie or whatever, but I loved it as a kid. The Commodore. And um and the sets were amazing. The set they built for that was amazing, I thought. Um mm -hmm. Robin Williams, you know, it just made me oh that's Mork from work, you know. And then it just made me like Robin Williams even way more. And it was just, you know. It was a great movie for a kid, for sure. And I have it. I have it on DVD. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is not a movie that would have made my even top 20. Um, but I will say I did enjoy Robin Williams as Popeye. Uh, he depicted the sailor who had a stroke and has tumors in his arms very, very well. Um, Shelley Duvall, the only actress uh, who had the figure to portray olive oil accurately. Um, the He's Large song was all right. The boxing match was pretty good. Uh, I do agree with Curtis. Uh, I mean, because they basically built an entire village on an island for this film. Yes. Um, but yeah, overall, I cannot say it's a good movie. I can't say it's a well-constructed movie. But, you know, that's just my opinion. I mean, hey, who am I? I like Xanadu. Ed, how about you? I mean, we're eight-year-old kids, you know. Let's right? just thank our lucky stars Kathleen Kennedy doesn't get a hold of this property. <laughs> but um, but um, Olive Oil, I thought she was the perfect. I agree with you. Shelley Duvall was perfect for Olive Oil. And Robin Williams, he, he became other people when he encompassed a role. And he was so, so good. Such a, 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 a fantastic talent that I... You well know. said. And um, th there can't be enough good said about him. And just, but, but 
the costume design on this was spot on. It just, for me, it, it, I, I pretty much think so. And uh, we were watching um, one of, one of the videos the other night um, when we were on the stream. Um, we had Popeye. You had Popeye in there um, last night. We were watching, remember? And uh, it, it, it just looking at the, the designs of that and, and how they brought it to the with probably not much money back then, but they brought it to to the the live screen to the you know to the movie screen and made it believable you know uh, yeah. yes and 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 yeah i was probably i guess 10 years old when this came out and i knew it wasn't a great movie but like one of you said before it was fun and i enjoyed it and it's it's a good memory it's it's a good memory yeah. of a film yeah. nice and uh moving on because He's large. We're going to ask Digital K, man, what he thinks. <laughs> um, again, this is one of those that, that I've seen once, maybe twice. And and I, it just, you know, I, I love Robin Williams, but but this one just, you know, it, it really didn't stick with me. And it's not one of those that, that I would probably go back and watch on purpose. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. All right. So Popeye picked by three people puts it in the C rank category. Moving on, the next uh, the next pick we have here is also picked by three people, the Blues Brothers. Um, this is picked by me, DC, and Curtis. And normally, Curtis being the top of the food chain, I would say he should go first here. But I'm the only one that lives in Chicago, so I'm going first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the Blues Brothers, man. All right, so you got Dan Aykroyd, who actually did a radio show in Chicago on WXRT called the Elwood Blues Hour for like 10 years. Um, the music in this movie is fucking incredible. Aretha Franklin's number, Ray Charles' number, and my absolute favorite, um, Minnie the Moocher, uh, performed by Cab Calloway. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, the church scene, the restaurant scene, uh, one of them wants two uh, dry white toast and the other one wants four fried chickens. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's it's an amazing movie. Um, and to this day, uh, every Halloween, they do uh, Blues Brothers themed haunted house in the Joliet prison where Elwood picks up Jake at the beginning of the film. You can literally go into that prison as a tourist now because it's no longer a prison. Oh, yeah. um, it is a fantastic film, and they would take away my Chicago card and kick me out of here if I didn't put it on my list. Party so, at Prophet's house for Halloween. Curtis, <laughs> you are next, my friend. You are next. Yeah, I, I love this movie. I saw it, you know, as a kid, and, like, I was introduced, and my dad was like, look, it's Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher. And I was like, oh. Ooh. That just drew me in even more, you know, and I was like, she played crazy good. <laughs> but yeah, like it was great. The just it was just a really funny movie. It was done well, I think. Um the so songs, they were on a mission from God. Yeah, the song <laughs> the songs were good, you know. And it was it was good. It had a little everything in it, you know. I mean, neo Nazis, they completely destroyed a shopping mall with a car chase. Like, come on, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, M3, you were the third one to pick this, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, it was Digital Caveman, K DC. Go ahead and uh, uh, give us yeah, your opinion. You know, again, this is one of those that I've maybe seen two or three times in its entirety through the years. And, you know, other than that, it's just like bits and pieces of it here and there. And, you know, I had to pick 10 movies, and I like Jan Dan Aykroyd and and uh, Jim Belushi, so. Oh, yeah. Nice. Well, you know, Carrie Fisher with a rocket launcher and she blows oh. up the building and <laughs> collapses on them and they just get up out of the bricks and dust themselves off and walk yeah. away. That's some good shit. All right, Ed, how about you? <laughs> um, of course I know this film. Um, I'm sure it's, it was on HBO several times in, in my house growing up. Um, I'm not a as major fan of it as some people are. I, I do realize how great the music in it is and um and some of the performances um and i don't know if this was john belushi's did this become before animal house i think it did 
No, uh, Animal House was late 70s, was so I think 70s? this was after that. Was this, yeah. his, yes. this wasn't his last film, or I don't know. It felt like it was towards the end. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's a good film. It's a fun film, and, you know, I take it for that. Um, but um, it's just that. It's, it's, it's a good, fun film. <laughs> M3, how about you, man? Have you seen this film? Um, I, I mean, is this the one where there's a car, car pileup of over 200 cop cars? Damn it. Uh, yes, yes, there is a massive cop car pileup. Yeah, I that's the one scene that I remember, and I thought that was pretty damn sick, dude. I was like, oh, I, I was talking to my dad. We were watching because I didn't see it back then. I saw it when my, I, I was like 28, 29, 30, maybe 28, 27. And I saw that scene because he was watching it. He was just, he was home chilling by himself, and he just watched movies. That was one that was on, and that's how I remember it. And I was like, fuck, that's a lot of damn cars. <laughs> Shit. Damn it, nice, you nice. took that from me. Oh, I'm so uh, <laughs> Moto, go go ahead on with yours, man. No, no, I'm sorry. I just messed with him three. But yeah, that was the thing I was thinking about the whole time was its famous pop police car pile up scene, you know? But uh, I love this movie. This movie's great. Another honorable mention. Um, it comes come to find out, it was kind of hard for the year 1980 to pick 10 movies. I, I was tripped out, you know? But um, I mean, this one's great. It's, it, I mean, it's got the Saturday Night Live band is in it. They're 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 singing. They're getting down. They're they're doing God's work. You know what I mean? And it's just awesome. How everything flows for them. How everything happens for them. And it's like like you said with the bricks. I mean, it's just it's great. It's a great movie. It's a great movie to watch. Another just classic. Nice. Yeah, and, and you know, they launch uh they launch some neo Nazis off of an unfinished bridge in a pinto, which is pretty great. And I didn't uh, think you about know, that. one last note on this film, uh just a question that I have to ask. How much for the women? And again, picked by three people, so this is a C ranked movie. Moving on, we uh you know what? We're we're, we're about halfway through here. So why don't we take a quick intermission and uh, go ahead and anyone who needs to like use the restroom or fill their drinks or whatever. Right on. Do we do that We'll here? take care of that real quick. <laughs> uh, if you want to, man, you're, you're in your own house, man. Uh, if you don't mind the smell, you knock Ed, yourself out. Ed, do us a favor and kill your camera. Oh, no. Then, you know, no. whatever. Yeah, like a Mountain Dew two-liter bottle. I'm not charging y'all for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Be right back. Hey, chicken fry. Yeah. Hey, today. Grab that two-liter bottle. by hymns. Hymns. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I get, all kinds of, I get all kinds of emails about, like, weird shit all the time. Like, I wake up, there's 68 emails. You got to erase, erase. And none of them are important. Absolutely none of them. <laughs> I almost got to the point. I just quit looking at my email because it's just. I junk. know. I do the same shit. It's a, it's as it's as bad as junk mail in your mailbox. Yeah. Well, no, I think these days it's worse than junk mail in your mailbox. It's like junk mail used to be back in in like the the mid '80s when you get you know the publishers clearing house and. Shoot, that was all that kind of stuff, you know. Oh. Yeah, it sounds like somebody's dog's getting ready to tear somebody in half. There you go, chicken fried. You're in. There's no fucking way, dude. Hey, chicken that fried. dog is like four houses down and shit barking. Yeah, what about it? Good lord. Oh, no, that's dude, and I, I have a laptop microphone, and my volume's way down. What kind of microphone do you have? Your name is now Daredevil. You know that, you son of a bitch? <laughs> hey, Moto, it's not you. It's it's um, Ed's fucking phone. It's got Star Trek fucking... No, 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 no. That's my phone. That's my phone. It keeps oh, going. That's my notification. You said about that dog barking way the hell down the road. Yeah, they were talking about the dog barking. Oh, Daredevil over there. What kind of microphone you got, bro? Um, the, the kind that's built into a Toshiba... Uh, laptop. Hey, my, dad, my dad used Toshiba. He liked it. It's just whatever the whatever. You know, Toshiba whatever. one time. It was pretty. It was a great laptop, man. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, any of the mic made some perfect. perfect things. 
Yeah. So how's the weather over where you guys are at? Nice, cold, dreary. Yeah, very so ominous. it was nice and cool. It felt like it was like like a, a nice October. October. Yes, 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 yes. It is. It is hot and muggy. Just your basic, almost year-round Georgia weather here. Oh, <laughs> that's why I don't we, have, we have like two months of, of winter and maybe like a couple of weeks of, of, of fall, and then everything else is just summertime. Yes, that's why I don't live there. I can't handle it no more. I have to have four seasons. <laughs> It just stopped. What the hell? I don't know. Everybody's taking a nap. So, so, so Popeye beat out a bunch of uh, movies. Yeah, because. Uh, what up, chicken fried? Old school. I have never seen Titanic, but number two looks pretty good. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah, Titanic was a number two. Don't discovered <laughs> you another seen, lonely heart. I've seen Titanic once. Uh, the first one with Leonardo DiCaprio and shit. Yeah, I, I've Looking seen it. I, I maybe I saw it once in the theater, and then I maybe saw it once when it came out on VHS. Yeah, I love that Victorian time. And the only thing I can really say about that movie is the sets were fantastic. The cinematography was fantastic. What movie? Titanic. Titanic. Now, if oh, you're going yeah, in, man. if you're a dude and you're going into Titanic for the story, just just go ahead and pass because you're not going right. to like it. Hey, but it, no, Leonardo. You know, I have a funny Titanic out. story myself. I went to see that movie with a friend of mine named Corey who was six foot seven, <laughs> right? So this big monster of a dude. And, uh, you know, at the scene where all the people were in the water freezing to death, you know, before the rescue boats got there. Yeah, yeah. I was getting choked up. But then next to me in the seat, there's this giant man going. I started laughing, right? I started yeah, laughing. Right? And then I'm like leaving the theater and there's this group of women going, that's him. He's the one that was laughing while those people were dying in the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, fucking hilarious. Yeah, fucking buddies, man, buddies. All anything? right, so is everybody back? <clears throat> All right, let's move on. The next pick on our list, and this is the only one that was uh, voted on by four people, picked by four oh, different people. Stir crazy. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Let's get yes. real. <laughs> now, this was uh, picked by one person who's not here, Bull, uh, Digital Caveman M3 and Moto Viper. That's right. So, considering that M3 is the highest one on the food chain here, M3, why don't you start? I love the movie. And again, my dad brought this movie home and we watched it, and it was fucking epic, dude. The whole, every funny scene was funny. There was a lot of scenes where he kind of carried you through, and, and G. Wilder and um, uh, Richard Pryor are, are great. They've always been great. And uh, the. Uh, we bad, like they fucking came into the jail cell, like acting like we bad, like we bad, we bad. <laughs> we bad. <laughs> I love it. It's great. It's all I got. Perfect movie. Nice, nice. Uh, Moto, how about you? <coughs> These actors became brothers, and this movie was so damn hilarious. The white jokes, the black jokes. The shit was all right back then, and it was funny because nobody got their fucking asshole fucking wadded up that there was a joke said. Yeah, back then they understood that uh, that stuff was uh, was called humor. Yeah, exactly. Now the story, the story is unbelievable. I don't think I've heard another story like that. I mean, you've got all these remakes and rehashes we've done. We've yet to see this screenplay redone. 
Oh, which is kind of kind of chilling. Impossible, impossible to be redone. Digital, how about you? Uh, you know, again, with a lot of the movies on this list, this is one of those that I've seen, you know, a few times, and it just. I, I I remember like there was a rodeo at the end, and I remember it was a funny movie, and I remember enjoying you know like Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder together. In fact, you know I I wish they had more movies that they were in together besides the what uh, was it three or four movies that three in total that they did together. Is Hear No Evil Speak No Evil in one of those three? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that makes it four, right? Because it was this one, Silver Streak, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, and not, there was one more. What was the other one? I, I can't remember. I, I can't remember the name of it, but I, I'm almost positive there was one more. Because that's what I remember is the Silver Streak. So, this I mean, one. But, I mean, they're, they're just – those guys are great together. It's it's like when you put Miles exactly. and Dom DeLuise together. You know, it's just gold. Nice. Curtis, how about you? Are you on stir crazy? Yeah, of course. You know, as a kid, all that shit was funny as fuck to me. You know that <laughs> we bet. You know that was it was great, man. I was anytime uh, they said Richard Pryor or or um or uh, Gene. You know, like I I stop. Like I want to watch it. <laughs> you know, they you know yeah. like Showtime or HBO. They would like say this is coming on. You'd be like, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the uh, the uh, the idea that they used the prison rodeo as a chance to escape. Yeah. And Grossberger, yeah, right. the one they, they they were most afraid of, was the one that helped them get out. I thought that was pretty cool. Popeye, uh, Ed, how about you? Any anything to say about Stir Crazy? Um, it's a fantastic film. But to answer your question real quick, the fourth film they did was in 1991 called Another You, and it was. Oh, yes. I remember that movie. It says, uh, um, it stars Richard Pryor, Gene, uh, blah, 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 Vanessa Williams, Kevin Pollack, uh, blah, blah, blah. The film is about. It's a comedy film, blah, blah, blah. Okay, tell me what it's about. (laughs) This is what it looks like. Let me show you. Well, you know what? Maybe we'll get to that in 91. Yeah, maybe. 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 um, I would have not remembered that one. Um, this was a great film, and, uh, uh, this had the jail scene when they walked out and said, that's right, we bad, we bad. You know, who doesn't know that? You know, with the million exactly. lines. Richard Pryor is probably one of the greatest comic geniuses of the of all time, of any century. And uh, and he, he was just so funny. You know, he was everywhere. When we got the Superman, he had his own film, basically. You know, <laughs> that's how, yeah. how popular Richard Pryor was in the early 80s. You couldn't touch him. And, and his comedy specials that, you know, I got to watch. I was like, oh, my God, I'm watching these. These are these are so, uh, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I know, I know, I know. But, yeah, Stir Crazy <laughs> is just too much fun. And, yeah, it's a film that I don't think you could make, honestly, in, in 2024 without offending somebody. They just yeah. – Check well, check your humor at the door, or whatever yeah. you know. You know yeah, they're, 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 they're they're humor, man. Moto, why don't you give us uh, why don't you give us the closing thoughts on Stir Crazy? Um, close, my closing thoughts would be the 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 three. God, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to hell for this. The three lesbians that started the Black Lives Matter campaign that fucked up everything in this country. Should have watched this movie in the beginning to see that we're all fucking people and we <laughs> this shit is great and we're just we're all this fucking same, Fuck yeah, the man. same damn problems. Fuck yeah! But I don't know. That's that's how I would close it up. Sorry to be uh, negative about it. Hey, no man, that, that's a that's a good message. I, look, I miss that humor. I miss the humor, the freedom of humor, because it was humor bro, that always brought our races together. And and can I can I touch on what he's he's talking about there for a minute? You know, there's a reason sure. there's a reason that we're not seeing comedies like this anymore. We don't, we don't really see R rated comedies, no nope. anymore. You know, Wolverine and Deadpool, uh, you know, kind of being the exception. Uh, but I wouldn't really totally classify that as comedy. But it's it's because in the way our society is now, there it's. It's so taboo to offend somebody 
Yeah. And you can't make a, a comedy, an R-rated comedy, without offending somebody. Somebody somewhere is going to be offended. And that, let's but we, not, and we grew up learning comedy. to offend. I mean, we would offend our best friends all the and time. You exactly. know what I mean? And your mama exactly. jokes and all that shit. Exactly. And and I don't think I don't think it's like, you know, it's just not like that anymore. It's, no, it's not. Yeah, it's it's not like it. Sadie's R-rated comedies and, where there was at least one pair of jumblies running across the screen. And and, you know, Grr. you can go back now and you'll see, uh, you know, there's YouTubers out there who are talking about, well, this movie was made in such and such a date and it's so offensive now. And, but but you can't look at it through the you can't watch these things through the lens of 2024. I think Ed was kind of That's exactly touching on that a little bit. All you, the time. Can't. Yeah. you have to put There's yourself F in history class. Ed. Yeah, you have to put yourself into the mindset of you know when these movies were made. The audience exactly. these movies were made for. You'll never get Chris. You'll never get a Superman film where they say truth, justice in the American in the way. American way. Because yeah, because that was Christopher Reeve in the time of. You know, Patriotism, Reagan, the Reaganomics Cold War. and all that. It was the Cold War. Right. Everybody was well, and that's that's why G.I. Joe yeah. has to be an international force now instead of a real American exactly. hero. Exactly. But um, mm -hmm. but um, but the thing is, <laughs> I think the thing we get confused with is that from the wife. Uh, generally, yeah. as people, is we say, well, well, this is a Democrat problem or this is a, a Republican problem. There's people on each side that get offended. I think just the same. But, you know, you got to look how the media skews things and, and, and how it's perceived and how we take it. Because it's not, it's not always, you know, I know people on all ends of the spectrum. And it just comes down to the kind of person you are. And if you've got a sense of humor. And you got to be able, I think, in life to laugh at yourself, to be able to say, you know, I'm not the greatest thing. You know, exactly. I've got some imperfections. And, and yeah, you know, people can't do that anymore. Right, we've lost you know, the ability. That's, that's the beauty of yeah. the fact that we're talking about 1980. We don't have to get hung up on 2024 bullshit. Right. <laughs> exactly. And, and you definitely need to look at this as a 1980 film and appreciate it for the time and culture. Because there's no way any. I'd like to think that as a as a people, as a culture, as an entire planet, we grow and we learn from our mistakes. Oh, and we. Oh, you heard me. I eat my words. I'll keep my words. It all got fucked up when the Black Lives Matter it's all right. started with the All right, guys. Yeah, let's, let's kind of stick to our <laughs> turns, man. That, but it's yeah, yeah, let's stick to our look. turns, man. Let's... I'm losing all control here. It's not cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not cool. Attica, Attica. All right, so moving on. <laughs> right, okay. right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting into the picks that five people chose. The first A rank movie did, in fact, I believe, have some titties jumbling across the screen at one point. Oh, no, it didn't. I'm sorry. It's the next one Flash Gordon. But they were well muscled titties. <laughs> this, this, had, this had some titties we wanted to see. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm talking about Flash Ming. Gordon. Who are y'all talking about? Come on, come on, come on. Uh, this was picked by Bull, Bull, who's not here, Digital Caveman, Ed, myself, and Curtis. Yes. Uh, and Curtis is the top of the food chain, and this is not a movie that came out in Ch that was uh, filmed in Chicago. So, Curtis, why don't you start us off? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flash Gordon, man, it came on cable, and I watched it, and I was like, oh, I didn't know this was out, you know, like, you know. It, I loved it. It was great. It was, it had, it might not have been the real best movie made. It could have maybe, but, but it was just a great fun adventure movie with, um, a lot of hot, like all the women had to be hot <laughs> to be in that, in that movie. Like, you know, okay. all us looking, you know, like, and then, you know, it's just great, you know, and then Ming was, he, his makeup and costumes and stuff were great. And, and, you know, you had Hawkman, Hawkman was one, is like my favorite probably guy in the whole thing. Gordon's alive. Flash Gordon's alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll, I'll let some other people talk about it because there's a lot of people who yeah. it in it. Yeah, yeah, definitely you know, right? good stuff. Uh, Max von Sido as uh, Ming the Merciless. Yes, couldn't have picked a better actor for that role. 
Um, the one that played his daughter, extremely hot. The one that played Dale, extremely hot. Um, General, what is it? General Vala? Is that the, the woman? Oh, man, she was hot. Yeah. Um, you know, this was a campy movie. Uh, and the effects were like not the greatest. Like you could almost see the strings holding the ships up during the air combat and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, the Hawkman's wings was so stiff it was ridiculous. Yes. The lizard man in the cave in the cave looked like it could have been like made by a twelve year old in art class. Yes, but um, but still, just such a fun ride uh, that I I couldn't uh, I couldn't love it more. Uh, you know, it's um. Just a, just a really, like, fun, fun movie. When let's not forget, Queen did the entire soundtrack. Oh, yes. How could I have not said that? And oh, that my. is uh, that not so something to scoff at. Uh, next, we've got Ed. Ed, who, what do you think of uh, Flash Gordon? You stole my thunder there. I was going to say, yeah, that, that liberal was singing really loud and proud there, I tell you. <laughs> the great, one of the greatest showmen ever. Uh, Freddie Mercury and Queen and um, uh, yeah, story. the music was great. It made they played into the campiness of this film, and that seemed to even make it even more watchable. You know, you you almost knew this was like a, a really good B movie. You know, and uh, I just remember watching this over and over again. And I remember probably a few years later, probably eighty three, we got a Buck Rogers um, on TV, and I remember having the Buck Rogers. <laughs> ship and all that and you know and i, I probably had some stuff i don't, from Flash I don't think Gordon. buck rogers was that that much later it, i want to say it was like 81 maybe was it 81 okay yeah with buck G- rogers? Jill gerard and and, and uh, help yeah. me, i can't remember the female in there she was super hot she was in the uh 80s. gray god damn aaron, it. aaron gray aaron gray yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to you we'll but, get yeah, to yeah, you. but anyway yeah not to get off topic but it reminded those i always associate those two kind of together you know is almost the same type of entity but Flash Gordon was just everything, man. It was like super bright colors. I mean, what could you not ask for? You know, if you didn't have ADHD, this film gave it to you. <laughs> it was right, awesome. right, right, right. Uh, DC, you're next. Okay. This movie, I'm going to tell you, this movie is the height of 80s cheese. Yes. It, it, it is the best example of somebody who, who doesn't know what 80s cheese is. And two movies that you can can put out there that they've more than likely seen that that best explains that is Flash Gordon or 1987's Masters of the Universe. And I remember going to see this movie. It was part of a double feature at the drive-in. I couldn't tell you what the first movie was because once I saw this, it didn't matter. And then uh, later on, my grandparents had cable, and it was at the time where they were just playing Flash Gordon all the time. Yes. And I just, I, every time it would come on, we, my brother and I, we would watch it, and we love this movie. And, and it's great. And again, you know, it's not great for the reasons of it was the best written movie of the year, or it had the best special effects. It was just, it was a really fun, like uh, Kurt said, uh, adventure movie that was in this fantastical place. And, you know, then you had the Queen soundtrack on top of that. Mm -hmm. And it's just the perfect 80s cheese film. That it is. M3, I know you haven't seen this. Uh, Any anything to say about it? Yeah, uh, two things. I loved him in Ted, and um, if um, if I could, I'll, if I'm 48 years old and haven't seen it yet. But with what you guys are saying, I should watch it. Oh so, yeah. All right, Moto. How about you, my friend? I'm gonna put it real easy and quick. This should be a movie with that primo that we all sit back and watch Flash Gordon and Xanadu. Right, we do the double feature. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, well, if that's all, I'm going to send out War Rocket Ajax to bring back the next movie. Uh, and this well, one is an A rank film. Rank radar, you know, picked by five people. So next. Nice. There we go. The the titties jiggling across the screen, also getting <laughs> slashed in pieces. Friday the 13th, 
picked by Bull, who is not here. Ed, M3, Moto, and Curtis. And Curtis, yeah. you are again the top of the food chain for this one. So start us off, sir. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I seen this. I think it came out in 80. Of course, I saw it on cable, and I believe that was in 81. But, it, you know, I was six years old, seven maybe, and it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> You know, fucking hey, fucking hey. It was great. It was gruesome. It had a little bit, of hair, you know, and then the 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 ending was like, for me, it was like, you know, know who it was when the kid came out of the the lake. Who was you? Yeah, right. Yeah, you're like, right. Wait, wait, oh my gosh, yeah. uh, you know, it was, you know, it 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 wasn't like the greatest Friday the Thirteenth for me. But seeing it as the first one, it was like, well, okay, I'm kind of interested in that. I get scared the crap out of me, you know, but, you know. Right. Yeah, uh, and, and how about right. you? That's right. Well, yeah, what can I say later on, you know? I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wasn't 1980 a great time in the early 80s for horror movies? I mean. Yes. I mean, Friday, this one kicked it off. And then after this. Uh, a few after this, they got really stupid and crazy and dumb and just like the Freddy Kruegers. But this was legitimately we'll horrifying for a 10 year old. I remember sitting there, I think in the film, and I think it may be the first one here, but I remember there's a where they're sitting on a couch, some people on a couch with their back to the window where the couch is. And then Fre- um, Jason comes through the window. We literally were sitting on the couch when I first saw this, and some of my <laughs> siblings were sitting there and like scared, well, jump scared I, I me. I gotta correct you on one thing, Ed. Not Jason coming through the window in this movie. Not Jason. Uh, Freddie. Freddie. Excuse me. No, no, Pamela. Was it? Pamela? Yes, it was Jason's was it mother. In this oh, one. okay. Okay. Well, somebody came through the damn window. But <laughs> thank you. But um, yeah, I just remember being. This was just legitimately. Such a, it was not, you know, I could never understand how he could walk and get everywhere. That that still baffled me. I still don't think I know the answer to that, but I didn't care. It was just, they were just really good jump scare films and they had good suspense to them at the time, you know, and they're, they're kind of, they're very much played out now, but when it first hit, there's nothing like it, you know, and oh my gosh, so many good films like that. So a classic. Yeah. All right. M3, you're up. Yes, um, this is a really good movie. Um, <laughs> it's your dominatrix. Just, just to tell you, the, the the killer wasn't Jason in the first one. The killer was the motherfucking mom and shit. She was a girl. Yeah, um, that's mother. what I said. It was Pamela. Pamela yeah, Volpe. Yeah, yeah. And so, Bacon. Yeah, dude, <laughs> the movie was great the whole time. And all the way up, she, she, now she has a legacy right at the end. The real fucking Jason jumps out of the fucking canoe or out of the water and grabs the fucking girl, dude. Um, very, very fucking cool movie. The, uh, titties, the counselors, man. I, I, counselors are great. Cheerleaders are better. But in that time, perfect, man. Perfect. That's all I got. Nice. And uh, Moto, I believe you're the last one on this one. <clears throat> oh, absolutely loved this movie. Again, remember the conversion band I was telling you guys about? Oh, yeah. Living in the desert every every uh, summer, we go up to the high country, Flagstaff and whatnot, to get away from it. That's the forest. And so then I became scared shitless of the forest. But I, every time we go camping, because we camped a lot. Hey, when, yes. when you said conversion, but, when I was like, your church has a conversion van? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking 1980s. Like, I think it was a 78 Ford conversion van. Dude, th- this thing was dope. But anyways... So we would go camping up in northern Arizona, and that's just terrified the shit out of me ever since. Ever since we watched this movie, because my mom and I would always go watch horror movies. Always, no matter what it was, we were going to watch it. Yes. And um, now this one, this one has a, a Kevin Bacon with the arrow going through his neck. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, I mean, you, you never seen such clean special effects before. That was great. Um. It was it was really really well done. Um, yeah, wasn't it shot. Tom Savini? Or was that? I would not surprise me. Is it Stan Winston or was that later? <laughs> On the effects. Hey, there's a bunch of them. 
There's a bunch of movies. There's like a lot of people who did effects on it. It doesn't say. It shut yeah, up. It doesn't have it on the post. It doesn't have it on there. But no, I mean, it was clean. It was crisp. It was bloody. The gore. I mean, and they even they even showed gore when they wanted to and showed gore when they didn't need to. And it was still perfect. I mean, this set off how many billions of dollars? What does this movie cost? Let me do a Google search and see what Friday 13th cost to make. In 1978, 79, or whatever. $2.85. Yeah, I mean, it was you know what I'm saying? $100,000, to be honest. Yeah. And, 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 and then look at it now. I mean, it's it's it's, it's seeded and bloomed into... Uh, it, dude, this shit will be in the uh, Smithsonian. This will be part of our story yeah, 100 years from now. Franchise. This movie. Yeah. yeah. Good job, brother. Oh, yeah. Shut up, Peter. Yeah, um, my thoughts... Uh, gonna be the unpopular ones here um because i remember watching it and thinking this is pretty great and then it gets to the end and, and the and the killer is an old woman and i'm like really all these young fit men these athletic men got beat by an old woman like i was i was you know a little disappointed and then they they fixed it by you know having jason come out of the water and get the final girl but then it was just a dream. I'm like, come on, man. So yeah, this isn't this isn't a great one for me. Uh, Digital, how about you? Um, uh, in 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 my house, you know, my parents did not like horror movies, so this is one I did not see until I was an adult. And you know, by the time I watched, there there were no big surprises or anything. Every you know, I already knew what was going on in the movie, who the killer was. Oh, that's it goes up bad, at the very bro. end. And Damn. uh you know, I mean the biggest thing that I remember oh my god, that's Kevin Baking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey guys, <laughs> you know <laughs> look in the chat. O- OG Skywatch has the budget in the box office for it. You can pop it on screen. Oh, What's five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's crazy. Wow. Yes, okay. and probably eighty percent of that was spent on blood. <laughs> probably, <laughs> <laughs> right? Probably. If they tried to remake that with the same <laughs> cast today, that would be Kevin uh, Bacon. So a little over half a million uh, yeah. brings in damn near sixty million. That and that's in nineteen eighty money. That's fucking crazy, bro. That it is. But uh, that yeah, should be an was, uh, S movie. I take it all five, five back. panelists, four of which are here, so it gets an A rank. Amen. Uh, moving on, another movie. This one had titties in it too, but they comedically jiggled across the screen. Airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Airplane was picked by Bull, who is not here. Uh, Digital Caveman, Ed, M3, myself, and Curtis. Uh, Curtis, you are the top of the food chain again. Why don't you start us off? Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> I, I don't think I, I was going to say that. <laughs> we all were going to say that. <laughs> you speak jive. <laughs> That's all I got to say. It was great. It was it's, a great say, it's a great, Jeez. stupid, stupid comedy nice. movie that is just so fun to watch. And if you want to laugh, man, smoke a bull and drink a couple beers or something. <laughs> You're going to. Yeah. The, cool. yeah this, this movie. Uh, it, it, it kind of well, basically, all it really did was take a lot of like um, the 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 slang of the time and showed it to you literally on screen, you know. Um, and there was some outside, some other jokes outside of that as well. But the bulk of the comedy is like you know when the shit hits the fan, and then they show an actual pile of shit hitting a fan, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, or uh, I think one of my favorite bits in the whole thing was. Um, We've got to get this woman to a hospital. What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Robert, uh, Robert Stack, you can never take him serious. Yeah, that. we'll get to you, Ed. You're next. You're next. Um, yeah, but uh, the the cast of it, like a whole cast of hilarious people, uh, Leslie Nielsen, like doing like the best work of his career, in my opinion. Well, the best work of his comedy career. Right. Uh, I, I personally think he's funnier th- in this than he was in um, in the Naked Gun franchise. Uh, but man, this movie's incredible. Uh, it's it's nonstop funny. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar wearing his uh, Lakers shorts as he flies the plane—hilarious. Um, 
the the autopilot uh, needing to be reinflated yeah, uh, by the tube under his belt, like uh, kind of hilarious. OG Skywatch said it looks like it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let Ed take over. Yeah, sorry to step on you there. Um, how how could everybody not pick this film? <laughs> it's like this is a, such a classic. I mean, every kind of slapstick joke. It's all there. Uh, even the guy, the air controller, he was hilarious. Annie M, Annie M. You know, it's like just overreacting. There's so much overacting, so much physical comedy. Um, it's it's genius. Um, now, I was a massive fan of the Naked Gun trilogy. Uh, in the 80s and in, in Leslie Nielsen he is just he's just comic gold and I think Caveman touched on it uh, when after he died and uh, stopped doing those films they that that's a genre of film that I feel like died with Leslie Nielsen that kind of <clears throat> comedy spoofing that you know they try everybody tried to imitate it and it just was never the same but Airplane is just so iconic. The second one, not so good, but still funny uh, in its own right. But yeah, I, you can't say enough great things about Airplane. It's it's just everything. It's everything. <laughs> right, right, right down to the opening scene where the plane's tail fin is imitating Jaws. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, M3, you're next. Um, so I chose this movie thinking, and I'm glad you guys spoke first, that it was Naked Gun and it had that correlation to it. But I do remember when the parts that you guys spoke of, like the the air blow or the sex doll and the fucking air, the pilots and shit. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I, I do remember it, but I seen it one time, and I seen it at the time that I saw um, Police Academy. So I was like fourteen, I think, fifteen, sixteen, maybe. Yeah, but I, and I remember certain certain parts. But in my head, I was thinking of O.J. Simpson that was in it, and fucking, mm -hmm. but that's Naked Gun. Yeah, that's not yeah. this movie. Right, right, right. But it is a good movie, and I, I don't mind having it in a position. Y'all remember the scene when they kept everybody was taking lines on the plane to uh, uh, to slap the lady in the seat and shake her? Hell, that yes. That still gets yep. me to today. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if we get into every joke, we could have, make a whole show just about yeah. airplanes. <laughs> yes. uh, DC, how about you, man? Uh, I, you know, I think you guys said it all, and the only, the only thing that I have left to say is Leslie Nielsen. That, that's it. I mean, all it, right, it, uh, Moto. Any 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 thoughts from you on airplane? Oh, I loved it. It was another honorable mention, um, but it was uh, a little bit over my head. I, I got some of it, you know. Um, my uncles took me to go see this movie. They wanted to go see it, and it was one of those things where they said, "Don't tell, your, don't tell your grandma, don't tell Nana." <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So it's on there, but it was a little bit over my head. But I totally get the comedy. Um, I probably about two years following that. It was the in fact little thing here. Airplane was the first laser disc movie I've ever watched. Nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. So then you know, yeah, I watched it. It was a couple years later, but yeah, great movie, hysterical. It doesn't stop from beginning to end. I mean, it, there's some parts that will get you crying laughing. Yeah, it's just joke after joke. You know? Well, now, the thing that. is, is we're in 2024 trying to explain it, but <clears throat> back then, watching it as your first time, getting your cherry popped, if you will, it is unbelievably fun. It's kind of like the first time I watched, I watched South Park. The first time I saw South Park, the movie... I, I didn't laugh. I was I was so stuck in the humor. In it. There was not one time that I laughed. It was that good. And that's how airplane was for me. I it was it was just nonstop laughter. All right. Uh yeah, I'll say Roger that and over. <laughs> and we move on. Uh, that is another over. A rank with five people choosing it. The next one on the list, uh, I believe is our first S rank film. Caddyshack. Right. And this was picked by Bull, who again is not here. Digital Caveman, Ed, Moto, myself, and Curtis. Uh, Curtis, you are the top of the food chain once again. Why don't you start us off on Caddyshack? Isn't there a Chicago guy in this movie? Uh, but it did not take place in Chicago, so we're good to go. <laughs> okay, soundtrack. You know, Kenny Loggins, right? 
Indeed. Everybody, everybody knows that. Um, he had, uh, oh, I can't remember the old actor's name that was in it. Um, he was pretty famous. Um, Bill Murray, um, Chevy Chase, all, all, I mean, it was, it's just a great comedy. It's more humor that people, you know, um, well, let me see. Harold Ramis. I didn't, I didn't know that he co-wrote it. Oh, Harold. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to leave a lot more names for some other people (laughs) to say, but there's a lot, there's a lot of people in that. Yeah, comedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, my danger field. Oh my! Sorry, I said I wasn't going to say no more, but yeah, yeah. Oh. Sorry, and that's why I was starting to talk because you said you were done. Damn it! Sorry. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, Ted Knight, hilarious, uh, soulless, uh, rich dude. You know the judge. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I would say my favorite line in the entire movie is when the caddy goes, uh, "Yeah, I got accepted into Harvard, but my family can't afford to send me." And Ted Knight says, "Well, the world needs ditch diggers too." <laughs> you know, <laughs> hilarious. Um, yeah. Rodney Dangerfield, like, look at this head. I bet if you buy this head, you get a free bowl of soup. Oh, it looks good on you, though. You know, uh, you know, he's like, can you make an old fashion? Can you make a shoe smell? Here, buy yourself a personality. Rodney Dangerfield is just so fast in this movie. Yeah. Um, Chevy Chase, uh, hilarious in this film. Um, and any, uh, the girl he hooks up with Lacey Underall, come on, that's a James Bond girl. Yeah. Right. Uh, Bill Murray with his mix of Kentucky bluegrass and Northern sense of uh, <laughs> taking a golf club to the fucking flowers while he watches the old women golf. Um, the priest who it swears God wouldn't ruin his, his, the greatest game of his life and then strikes him with lightning. Like everything. Oh, the, 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 the candy bar in the pool and Bill Murray picks it up and says, no big deal and eats it. And the old rich lady faints. <laughs> like, this is another one like airplane where the comedy in this film, we could just do a whole show on nothing but this. It's just fantastic. And I'm, you know, I have to assume that um, M3 just didn't see it. Otherwise there's no way it wouldn't have been on his list. Uh, Ed, I'm going to pass it on to you. There's uh, one f- X factor in this whole film, and it's the difference between Caddyshack 1 and Caddyshack 2, Rodney Dangerfield. Uh, you couldn't top his uh, quick wit and humor, and Jackie Gleason didn't have it in the second one. It didn't, it didn't work as well, and this was such a great ensemble cast. Everybody was like the top of their game, and... Uh, this is such a classic. You just, this is possibly one of the best movies ever. It just really is. And it's, it's funny. If you watch it in 2024, you're going to laugh your ass off. And, and any, any day you watch it, it's just so good. And it's just so wonderful. Um, what else can you say? <laughs> well, before we move on, I, I, I want to say there was another omission that was in the first that was replaced in the second which was uh, Bill Murray was gone in lieu of Dan Aykroyd as the yeah. groundskeeper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Moto, how about you? Oh, I absolutely love this movie. Great movie. Rodney Dangerfield was the best. Um, yeah, it was a, it, from the beginning to end. It didn't stop. And it was, it was good. It was good. You know, it was. it's up there for me. It's up there for me. Nice. Uh, DC, how about you? Oh, you know, I think you guys covered just about everything. You know, it was I know. a great, Except great the ensemble Groundhog. cast. I, I want to say this is probably my first uh, um, exposure to Rodney Dangerfield. And, and he was excellent in it. And whereas some of the gags in Airplane might feel a little dated, this one, oh. even though there is some stuff in here that, that probably is uh, 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 dated like that as well, it's probably not as much in Caddyshack as as, oh, man. as an airplane, you know. Yeah, well, this was like straight up just comedy writing where airplane was slapstick. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know me. So, uh, like I, I said, you know, airplane kind of dates itself a little bit, but this one, not not as much. Let me, 
<clears throat> can I can I even put one thing? Forgive me. I'm sorry. There is one thing I want to say that I can tell you. This movie has done for me. Looking back at my life, that Rodney Dangerfield character really did inspire me. And we'll get into it in the, when the year comes. But then when it was back to school, almost the same damn character. It really, uh, it really, it became part of who I am as a man today. And that kind of just blows me away. So I just wanted to throw that out there real quick. Thank you, Digital, for letting me do that. Hey, no problem, no problem. Nice. Uh, M3, anything to say about Caddyshack? Yes, two things. Keep your eye on the fruit. Nobody mentioned the motherfucking chipmunk coming out of the fucking the damn thing. Uh, that might be because there was no chipmunk. It was a groundhog. It was a gopher, yeah. it was a gopher man. It was a gopher or a groundhog. I thought it was a groundhog. Oh, no, you're right. It was That's a gopher. groundhog. You're right. Yeah, the whole time, the whole time, okay. my was trying to get that fucker, dude. It's great. Yeah, yeah, the gopher's hilarious. Uh, you know, I never noticed Bill Murray getting there. beat by a gopher it was just funny. No, but if the OG Skywatch said it, and it might like I, when I, I wanted to say it so bad because nobody said it, but OG got it first, man. Right on, OG. What do you think the moral of the story was? Just don't take shit so so seriously. Relax, and it'll all happen for you. Well, uh, I'll, I'll bet fifty dollars that the rich kid picks his nose, <laughs> and we'll move on to the next film. Uh, this one was uh, voted by six out of seven panelists, so it gets an S ranking. Uh, next on the list, also picked by six out of seven, Bull, DC, Ed, Moto, myself, and Curtis. Uh, Curtis again. You are the top of the food chain, sir. Start us off on Superman 2. Superman 2. Um, they start off, you know, like in space, the uh, three villains in this like mirror looking thing called the Phantom Zone. And they're f- twirling around. And then like, um, I think like a explosion or something like shatters the glass and they come out and then they land on the moon. And the... Are you actually going to walk us through the whole film? And then (laughs) this is my my funny part that I like is because they they land on the moon. And, you know, like people say we never landed on the moon, but there's proof right there. We landed on the moon (laughs) and they took the 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 flag and then they heard them say Houston, there's a problem. So they called the planet Houston (laughs) instead of Earth. Nice. And it was it was a really fun movie for me and it was better because they had actual like super villains in it like i mean lex luger lex luther is a super villain but he's not like got like a lot of superpower he's just really smart but these guys were like you know they gave superman you know a run for his money type thing but i'm gonna leave it right there you guys can talk more about it lex luger the total package is back Yes. <laughs> oh, uh, and and Lex Lex gets my favorite line in the entire film. Kill me, Lex Luthor, extinguish the greatest criminal flame of our age. Like such a great line. Yes. Um, Zod, amazing villain. Um, uh, well, what's her name? Um, Ursula. Oh, Ursula. Ursula. Oh, so Ooh. hot. Ursula. Was she so was hot. so sexy, man. Oh. Um, you know, uh. uh the, the the fight in New York City, amazing. Yes. Um, oh, wow. I have to say, Curtis, if you're going to use Superman, uh, too, as proof that we were on the moon, uh, <laughs> take anything seriously from a movie where Superman flies around the Earth to turn back time, yes. I have to say, you don't need the Cobra Commander icon up for me to call you a buffoon anymore. <laughs> um yeah uh, there was a uh, there was some goofy stuff near the end in the phantom zone like the um his uh saran wrap s that like wrapped up nam uh you know uh but for the and 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 a guy with no superpowers walking from you know canada to the north pole and not dying in the blizzard uh seemed a little crazy to me but you got to suspend a little disbelief man it's a comic book movie um, and it and you know it was a lot of fun and that's why it's on my list. Ed, how about you? The the greatest Superman we will ever have, Christopher Reeve, um, and and much love to Henry Cavill and others. Um, but Christopher Reeve 
is Superman, will always be Superman. He just embodied everything great about Superman. And he was really proof that th there's this famous um, story that one day he walked through in full Superman costume through the commissary when they were filming there at the studio. And every woman just like turned and just, you know, they're all, all their heads turned. Everybody turned, especially the women. Mm -hmm. then, then the next day he walked through at lunchtime dressed as Clark Kent. Nobody noticed him. So that's how the disguises work. That's how good Christopher Reeve was. He, there was no kind of CGI really. I mean, he built his body to get up to that, you know, physical physique of Superman. Yes. And he believed in the core values of <laughs> Superman, that he was a generally nice guy. And, you know, he wasn't conflicted. He wasn't, you know, all of that. He knew who he was and he could stand on that. And he was the true symbol. This is how you write and, and do Superman. And uh, for villains, Terrence Stamp, we got him later on in Smallville as the voice of Jarrell, ironically. And uh, <laughs> Terrence Stamp is so such a brilliant actor. And um, as General Zod, you know, the Neil before Zod and Planet Houston. I was just about to say. Oh. And, 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 he, <laughs> and he cares for these things like creatures, I suppose. You know, Ursula, or whatever her name was, Ursa, super hot. But did you ever notice... That snake could bite her. Nothing else could hurt her, but that snake bit her, and then she burned him up, which is exactly what I'd do <laughs> if I saw a snake. But yeah. um, and there's so many things. And 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 if you want to know where they they paid for all of this, it was in that fight scene where they the Coca-Cola sign. The you know you had yeah. you know and it's yeah. like and, and and like when the guy comes out there because it's so it, it's it's a dated film and it it doesn't some <clears> things don't age in it like the guy on roller skates you know when they're blowing the wind and he's like the girl's going backwards with the roller skates and then he comes, <laughs> when superman comes out he turns into superman and he goes hey jack nice outfit <laughs> he's like, no 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 that was the first one was that, that the was first the first one, one. okay yeah that and, was the first one and yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the, the guy in the payphone getting blown over oh, yeah. and still talking that <laughs> yeah. was his yeah. one there's so many things and um now uh, we're probably not going to dive into the donner cut versus you know the theatrical but the way these they were filmed uh some of it you know a caveman could probably expand on it better than you know but i'm not going to go into all that but the, but such a great film and you know i've always been a superman fan before i was a batman fan which i was always a batman fan i was always a superman fan you know i'm always rooting for the good guys and uh not that bad batman's a bad guy but you know uh everything about this film is great and and i could watch it anytime it's just wonderful nice moto you were the next one that picked this film <clears throat> yes yes this is a it's just a great one. Um, after the first one with Lex Luthor, for this to come out, these three badasses to come down to planet Earth, I mean, they're taking out military tanks. Or, I mean, they're wreaking havoc, and they got the same powers as Superman. And the way he fakes them out at the end, and Lois Lane saying, you know what, I think you're a real bitch, excuse my language, and <laughs> knocks her down the cavern. I mean, from beginning to end, um, it was a great movie, and that's pretty much why it is up here with everybody else. But anything else to say has already pretty much been said. Do you oh, see anything? Uh, anything to add? Uh, yeah, I just want to say I love, I love this movie. First of all, this is this is my favorite Superman movie. This is a Superman movie that I go to when I want to watch just one Superman movie. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And I love the way that this movie ties in with the first movie and you know which i'm sure you guys know that the majority of superman 2 was filmed at the same time as as superman the movie because that was you know their original plan right. was you know to film them both at the same time and save money and that's not actually what happened but mm -hmm. the fact that you know, you see the three villains in this movie you see them in the first movie you know they're caught in the act they're put in the hula hoops and sent into the phantom zone. Yeah. And then, oh, you know, right. again, because of the way things were at the time, you know, we didn't have, you know, VHS was, was not in every single home back when this movie came out in 1980. So at the very yes. first of the film, you know, they have this recap 
of of what happens to Zod and and his fellow criminals at the very first of it, so that people who may not have seen the first movie or you know it's been two years, you know, so you know it, it brings that back to them, and then you know I have seen you know the, the multiple cuts of this film, and there's things that I like about the Donner cut. That, that I like better than this one. But as far as, you know, the whole movie all the way through, I'm, I'm going to go with this one because the Don, the ending of the Donner cut, I just hate it. And, yeah, yeah, you know, it, yeah. if you haven't seen it. I do suggest that you watch it. It is a good watch, but you know, he's in hours he flies in the, the elevator out of the, the, the Eiffel Tower and it's full of plastic explosives and that's how uh, uh-huh. Curtis proves that we went to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, I mean, even though you know Terrence Stamp and 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 uh, you know the other two actors who play the villains with him, they do such a good job at playing straight men when they're saying something that's funny like you know the whole houston thing and yeah and uh you know when they first land on earth and and they're in the lake or whatever so they you know fly on the top of it and and, you know walking across the water and and the the guy in the boat just you know he's looking at what he's drinking in his coffee cups and throws it out yeah and you know and then ed touched on it a little bit too the product placement at the end of this movie is just insane i mean you got the you know the coca-cola sign that he mentioned then there's the big marlboro truck and you know the people getting blowed past the kfc and in fact you know when 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 the people are blowing around there's like a couple that walks out and then their bucket of chicken gets blown away And you know, you know that's that's stuff that the the director of this version of the film put in there. It's this is not Richard Donner's stuff. Yeah, it was Richard Les- in there. And and I really remember when they played this on HBO, and and you know it would play you know like every third movie on HBO was Superman two, but they would also play like a behind the scenes for Superman too. And that's really what I remember. That's really what got me into wanting to know about how films were made and, and things like that. But, and, and, you know, everybody else touched on it too. I guess that Christopher Reeve is Superman and, you know, he embodied the core values of that character. And I don't think they will ever find anybody who will portray Superman to those core values again even though you know i guess you can say as time goes on the core value of the character can change but not for me it's always going to be truth justice in the american way and and you know christopher reeve is superman yeah and just to touch on christopher reeve before we pass it over to m3 um the fact that he was able to play clock kent and superman as completely different characters was pretty phenomenal M3, how about you? What do you have to say about Superman 2? Uh, three, three quick things. Yes, Christopher Reeves for president. Um, Henry Cavill is my second Superman. And the funny thing about his one trick that he did in the Arctic was he had that, like you mentioned, the cellophane fucking S come off his chest. Even as a kid, I was like, uh, Yeah. 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 Right, right. Well, you know, you said Christopher Reeve for president, and I have to say, if he ran as a Democrat, it wouldn't be the first time a dead man won. Uh, <laughs> get out there. Oh, man. Yeah, so Christopher Reeve, uh, with six out of seven, uh, it makes it into the S tier. Become son of Jarrell, Neil Brown. The uh, next movie Profit. in the S tier. Profit. Real quick, Profit. Don't mean to cut you off, sir, but... When we get to the last movie, I would like everybody in chat to give me their number one 1980 movie and let's compare it to ours. Uh, it's probably all going to be that movie. That's let's find out. Uh, Are we up there? Let's move on for now. Okay. Um, the next one, uh, I believe, is on all but Frank's list. Is, is it Frank? Yeah, everybody but Frank. 
Yes. Had The Shining on their list. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to start. Uh, Curtis is also the top of the food chain. The Overlook is not in Chicago, so go right ahead, uh, Curtis. The Shining, I saw that when it first came on cable with my grandfather, and it was at nighttime, and that shit scared the shit out of me. I was like, I think six or seven, right somewhere right around there whenever it came out on cable. And um, just, you know, and I didn't know at the time, but there are so many Easter eggs in that thing. So many Easter eggs. Uh, but the a whole thing with Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall and Jack going crazy and stuff and and Catman Struthers was in it and it was just a whole haunted hotel that made you think he's going nuts, but he's actually I think possessed. And it's just it's a crazy movie. It's really well written. I'm done. I'll let you guys yeah, explain. Um, <laughs> are you really done though? Yeah, I'm really done. All right. So yeah, because uh Stephen King himself did not like this version apparently. Um, because Kubrick, you know, he did change some things and kind of made it his own, but um, mm -hmm. but uh, we, you know, King himself did another, did his own version of it later, and this is just light years ahead of it. Like, so you know, Kubrick, uh, you know, he created a masterpiece here. Mm -hmm. Um, the hedge maze, amazing, the the yes. old woman in the bathtub, amazing, yes, uh, the little girls, amazing, the bloodbath from the elevator, amazing. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Um, you know, Shelley Duvall uh, was put through absolute hell for this movie by Kubrick. Uh, and I, I have to say, man, this was one of the only movies that scared me as a child. Uh, none of the other ones, uh, you know, Nightmare, <laughs> Freddy, uh, Michael Myers, none of them ever scared me, but this did. And I think the reason is because, you know, the, the victim in this is a child. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In all those other movies, the victims are adults. But in this, the victim is a child. So as a child watching this, I'm like, oh, I could be, you know, in trouble in this hotel. You know what I mean? Uh, the only other movie that scared me as a kid was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Those poor children. Yes. But, um, yeah, this movie is an absolute masterpiece. Um, the soundtrack, like, it's so understated but eerie. Mm -hmm. Like the score for this film does such a good job setting the tension behind everything and making you so tense that you can't like, you know, it's, it's like white knuckle tense, mm -hmm. you know, but um, Nicholson's performance, amazing. Shelley Duvall's performance, amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, Scatman Carruthers, uh, I was really sad to see him die. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I absolutely love this movie. Uh, it's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And I'll pass it on to Ed. This movie, I saw it when I was 10 years old. I wasn't supposed to see it, but my parents had fallen asleep, and I snuck into the living room where the TV was, <laughs> and I watched it on HBO. And I had nightmares for probably weeks. Um, right. This movie scared the living shit out of me, and I became an instant Jack Nicholson fan. Um, it took me a long time to disassociate him from this movie, um, and he's was probably one of my is one of my favorite actors. He doesn't act anymore, but um, what a genius that he is! I like. I mean, I like I like different things, but I like you know in literature I like. Edgar Allan Poe. I like somebody who's different, you know, somebody who's a little dark, you know, at times. And that's Nicholson was not afraid to go there as an actor. And I mean, one of our most celebrated actors, Shelley Duvall, she scared me more than anything in the film, just how skinny she looked and the hair. I don't know, I don't know why that scared me so much. I was more scared of her than anything else. Um, She's but olive oil without makeup. Exactly, you know, and and it took me a while to, to see her and other things. My favorite thing was when she was in Roxanne. That was a great film. Um, but what a masterpiece of, of horror this is. And I'm not a big horror fan, but I have mad respect for The Shining, and it, it, it messed me up at a young age. So I, it's just a masterpiece, and, and there's not much more to say about it. M3? Um, I've seen this movie about six times. Uh, shout out to uh, Ready Player One. They did a really big depiction of it. Um, and I like I like the movie so much. And, and a lot, everything that Prophet said with all those like, key points, perfect. I even looked 
We got the fucking the girls. Nice. Oh, fucking, I got a couple crossovers. Huh? One of them is shit. I, that, movie, that movie made a really good fucking impact on on how I think all, all, a lot of those movies should go. It's great. That's all I got. Uh, digital? Again, this is one of those that, you know, I didn't see. Well, I wasn't an adult when I first saw it, but, you know, in 89 when Batman came out and Jack Nicholson was the Joker, you know, it made me want to go back and, and, and really look at the other films that he had made. And, you know, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, The Shining. I mean, just... just and And when he plays... Someone who is insane or going insane, it, 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 you, you have to wonder where does he get the inspiration for this? And then you know, with with Kubrick, you know, directing and 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 you know, I guess doing most of the writing or, or changing whatever he wanted to to change in. And I mean, you know, he was a well known, well respected director or filmmaker. And so, you know, it's, it's and, you know, I, I don't, if anybody's left behind me, I, I don't want to take it all away, but, you know, just like the stuff that's in, in the, the common zeitgeist, you know, here's Johnny and the twins. And so it, it was just it, it, a masterpiece of a movie of, of a man just, you know, losing his mind. Definitely. Nice. Definitely. Now, Frank, you hadn't picked it. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't wind up trapped in the painting at the end of the film with the rest of us. Why don't you give us your opinion? <laughs> Absolutely love this movie. Um, it was just at the time, um, I did, I, like again, I misunderstood and I didn't see this one in, in 1980. Saw it on VHS. Um, scared the living shit out of me. I, I've been to Estes Park and I've been inside the Stanley Motel many of times. Wow. Seen the room, seen the hallway, seen the filming location. Um, wow. And there, I did a tour and there's, there is, um, you know, some, some pretty, uh, I had no idea Colorado was a slave state. So there's some pretty graphic stories and shit about the tunnels and the quarters and the, and the stuff. But did you, here's a little fun fact about that movie, that hotel, the, the what, what looks like wood is actually plaster, and they had the, the top of the tier flooring at the time, which was linoleum, same as the Titanic. Now, it, when you when you watch the movie, it it does it does. Uh, I do understand the whole cabin fever thing now. You know, being up here, right. um, COVID kind of gave me that cabin fever when we were locked down for a couple weeks. I'm like, holy shit, this is going to drive me insane. Um, well, I thanks think, for not uh, slaughtering your family. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 right? Um, I think there was a time when uh, Natalie wanted to slaughter me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of gave me a reference to The Shining, especially living here in Colorado. And, um, and uh, you're absolutely right about Stephen King did not like that version at all. In fact, he did his own afterwards. Hmm. But um, the movie as a whole was all right. The old lady in the bathtub, you know, especially when you're, you know, you're 10 and you see a hopper and then you're like, oh, titties, you know. <laughs> and then next thing you know, it's it's this, this decrepit old burnt woman. And, um, you know, it's just it's just it's just crazy. It's just. It, it threw me off, but at the same time, it wasn't the goriest movie. It wasn't the slashiest movie because I had seen Friday the 13th. You know, I had seen a couple other movies before The Shining that were more graphic, more like, holy shit, that I had nightmares over The Shining. But I think that's more of just how Stephen King is. And it's either you're a Stephen King fan or you're not when it comes to his uh, his type of horror. Right. Yeah, and and uh, you know, Anya, Anya, thing about the old woman in the bathtub, uh, I've never gone from hard to soft so fast in my life. Amen. <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, we're we're on to the very last movie on the list, my friends. That was an S list movie, and this last one is an S tier too. But just because that's the highest tier, 
All and right, this is people. the only movie on our is? list that was picked by every single person here. The Empire Strikes Back. And uh, everyone in the chat, like Frank asked earlier, if this was also your favorite movie of 1980, please chime in and let us know. Uh, but considering that, uh, you know, this is the last one and every single person uh, picked it, and Curtis actually goes by Star Wars Squawk Box and is on the top of the food chain. Curtis, why don't you kick us off here? Yes. Empire Strikes Back is probably my favorite movie of the Star Wars, entire Star Wars saga. Um, my grandfather took me to the movie theaters to see it, and I was just in awe with with Yoda and and them flying through the asteroids. And then even Hoth was just, what a way to kick it off with Hoth and a, and a battle at Hoth and stuff like that. And then, you know, um, Princess Leia kissing, kissing Luke. And I was like, oh, they're going to get married or whatever, you know. <laughs> and then like, um, and then it, the, the surprise, the surprise Yes. People I'm gonna leave it at that. People know what I'm talking about. And then um it's just Cloud City was great, uh you know, and just how they clean it looked like the set this the stage. It was everything like Dagobah was a great I don't know, they had to take like six months to build <laughs> that stage. Yeah, that shit was so good back then, man. Yeah, and the we'll film, get to your break. the film, the film that they used to record that, whatever style that was, or it, I don't know, it set the tone and the mood in 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 the film. And I've never seen nothing like that, like even since then, I don't, I can recall. And, you know, you got the bounty hunters all up in there with uh, Lord Vader and stuff. You know, it was really cool. You get to see Lord Vader do the choke for the first time and all that stuff. But they yeah, did the choke in the first one. Did he? Yeah, oh, yeah, he, he did. did. That's right. Yeah, yeah he <laughs> did. Duh. Yeah. Up in the Death Star. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was just such a good, well done movie that, George didn't direct, <laughs> and you know, um, it, I'm gonna leave it. And let somebody else go because there's just so much to talk about it. So, yeah, yeah, this is another one that could uh, easily get its own episode. Yes, um, the Hoff battle, incredible. Um, Vader never in all of the all of Star Wars has he ever been more menacing than he is in this film. Um. You know, people talk about uh, the Luke and Leia kisses in this film, but I'm sorry. In my opinion, they were both totally platonic. The first time he kisses, she kisses him is just to make Han jealous. Right, right. And right. the second time she kisses him, it's like, oh, poor baby, sick. It's like a mother kissing a sick child. A brother, you know. Uh, so I don't, I don't get the whole, you know, you know, uh, incest argument there, because neither of the kisses that she gives him uh, anything but platonic. Well, at the time, um, you didn't know it was incest. The, uh, the the stop motion in this film is part of the reason that I, just, I do stop motion today. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, and this is one of the few Star Wars, one of the, this is probably the only uh, Star Wars in the original trilogy that I think actually benefited from the special edition. Um, mm -hmm. Adding the windows to Cloud City. Uh, cleaning up the, the the translucent snow speeder cockpits on Hoth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the added wampa bits where you get to actually see him eating the tauntaun. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, it's um, it, it's just a masterpiece of, of cinema. Uh, it's a 10 out of 10, five stars. Um, it's my favorite Star Wars movie. And uh, every bit of it, the, the love story between Han and Leia, uh, introdu introduction of Yoda, um, you know, uh, everything about this movie is just damn near perfect. And uh, I'm going to pass it on to Ed. 
Yeah, it just, you know, we're going to say the same things over and over again, but um, yeah. George Lucas is the genius that he is because he, it starts with a great story like every every good thing does. And he had a great story. We know from the prequels, George should not be ever allowed to write dialogue. We understand that. He cannot write dialogue, but he is the, the master of of inventing new things. THX sound invented, you know, Star yeah. Wars was a catalyst for him to create. He made the prequels when he realized he each film, he was advancing the technology and he was doing that with the original trilogy. And, you know, now, now, you know, you blink and there's a new Star Wars something coming out and, and it, it really kind of cheapens it, you know, because these movies are so important to our lives and the characters so in our hearts that yep. there's there's hardly anything you can say more about it. Um, I remember, and this may have been when Return of the Jedi came out, but I feel like it was Empire. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Empire, but you could go to Burger King, and I know Caveman has some of these glasses, the Burger King, Empire yeah. Strikes Back. I had the one that had Vader on it, and I think I had one that had a um, Stormtrooper or something on it. I couldn't get the Luke. It was sold out or whatever. I still have the A2 and 3PO glass. Yeah, yeah. And, and and one of those, I think mine broke like years down the road, and I was like so sad. I was like, oh, my gosh, no. But um, there's just there's so many memories. The first movie I got to see with a friend of mine other than my parents was – was I think it was it was either Star Wars or Empire, but it was around this time. So and it might have been a re-release. I don't remember, but I, you know, such great memories. I'm I'm such a Star Trek fan. Obviously, everything I've got behind me here and my channels and and, and geek home world and what I do. I'm so passionate about it, and it's it's amazing how one man, if one man didn't exist, if George Lucas never existed my world would be a lot less and so would have a lot of ours. And um, I think um, uh, it was wonderful to mention being inspired to, to build to build the um, sets to collect the stuff, the, all the collecting that we do and the things that we hold dear. It came from one man's vision and his vision employed millions, <laughs> made billions upon billions and still does. And I, there's no way to recapture that spirit of the original trilogy. You just got to celebrate it and just have those great memories of it and, and realize how, for just a brief time, things were just so perfect. And um, what else can I say? It's just the perfect film. Well, to me, the well, you, you you had mentioned that uh, you know uh, a, a lot of like your collection wouldn't exist, like the way you see things wouldn't exist. Exactly. Um, from a perspective of GI Joe, you know, considering that I'm Destro, true, I would not exist <laughs> if it was not for Star Wars, because Hasbro would have never made three and three quarter inch Joes if it wasn't for Kenner Star Wars figures making that the wave. You know what I'm saying? So. Exactly. I'm with you on that. M3, how about you, my friend? My um, my favorite of the trilogy is is not this one, but that's okay because this is my second favorite, and I like the um, At At Walker. To this day, I want one, um, like a full size one, walking down. <laughs> and, and I can jump out and, and <laughs> I could jump out and get my eight my At At Walker dude or my uh, my ATST. I love those vehicles, man. They're fucking great, but the ATST is not in this one. But um, yes, I guess it is. Okay, if it is, yeah, yeah, is it down in the snow in Hong Kong? Yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Imagine the footprints from those. That'd be sick, dude. I'd love it. Anyway, great movie. I'll keep it short. Um, I, I love the whole thing. The the, the trilogy is the, the best part of it all. It's great. But the other three, I could you not have made them. I would have been fine. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Uh, Moto, how about you, my friend? Oh, I absolutely loved it. Everybody pretty much nailed it in the synopsis. Um, all I can say is to to add to everybody's story is that this was my first as a human being surprise ending of a movie going, holy shit. Yes. And 
that would that would pretty much be it. But I mean, Dagobah, Hoth, um, I mean, you, you name it, Cloud City. It's all great. The Carbonite, the the please join us for you know what I mean. Everything is great. But that moment at the end, that was that was my first time ever going holy shit and couldn't wait till till the next one uh digital how about you okay i i'm gonna tell you guys and i'm glad that that y'all all kind of glossed over this one and, and left it for me but probably this movie has one of the best lines in all of cinema. <laughs> yes. And that's Leia saying, I love you, and Han saying, I know. I know. The only the only other thing that ever comes even close to that is is in, in the family guy, you know, <laughs> commies of it where where Lois says I love you and Peter says fuck you. <laughs> I mean that, that that's the only other line that, that really comes close to this. But uh, you know, uh, Prophet, you touched on it, and Ed touched on it. You know, the biggest part of Star Wars is the merchandising. And, you know, our communities, for, you know, for, for what it is as collectors, would not exist without these movies. And probably this movie in particular, and while Kenner kind of set the tone with, you know, their original star wars figures when empire strikes back came out you know the figures didn't change much but the play sets and the vehicles really got much much better and you know if if you were into star wars you had at least one hoth play set and if you were lucky you had the ad at and now, the, don't get me wrong. There were some missteps, like like the the Star Destroyer playset that that yeah. was, uh, you know the cheese wedge or whatever people like to call it. That that was you know kind of a misstep. But when you look back at the playsets, especially like you know the the uh, the the white repaints of the land of the Jawas with the the cardboard backdrops. There were two of those that you know not a lot special about those. But when you get to like the playset that had the probot and and the 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 gun tower on it, or the 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 piece that they called the Imperial attack base for some reason, but you know it was yeah with the exploding archways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, really, that was Echo Base. I, why they called it Imperial Attack, but I, I don't know. But that's beside the point. That's but, a whole different show. Exactly. Because Kenner didn't and, have all the information. Well, that's that's probably the most right. Uh, right. expedient. Uh, but, uh, you know, just like I said, the community that we have now based around collecting action figures – it wouldn't exist the way that it does now. And, and for you guys who did not grow up during this time of, of these original star Wars action figures and, you know, which led to lots of other three and three quarter scale stuff, most notably GI Joe, which outlasted star Wars in its original run. It, it just none of that would exist without that without and and you know mostly the you know star wars the new hope as as we like to call it now but you know I, I i think kenner just really hit their stride with with the empire strikes back stuff this and show wouldn't exist without it because it, if exactly. it wasn't for star wars collecting i wouldn't be a toy collector now and I would have never met any of you guys. And uh, yeah, I got you know, one. Uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. An another another thing that you touched on, Prophet, was like, um, you know, George Lucas set out when he when he makes a Star Wars movie, he wants to improve or come up with something new technologically to help the film industry as a whole. But you know, not that he's given it away. So, you know, in the first one, it was it was pretty much recreating how to make a special effect. 
and make it look real. You know, they, they made special effects in space stuff before that. And in fact, some of the technology they used in that first movie is based on that older stuff, but to make it look realistic. And that was unheard of. And in The Empire Strikes Back, the thing that he decided to take on was stop motion. And again, like I said, you, you, Prophet, you touched on that some. And the well, thing and he even made innovations in that because he, there was something he invented for stop motion that had never been done before, and that's motion blur. Exactly, and that's to that's make it look smoother, make to. it look less choppy. Yes, and not not that you know you 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 watch it and you still know that that's stop motion. I mean, it doesn't make it look one hundred percent realistic or anything like that. But compared to what they were doing before that, you know, it does look a lot better and it was a leap forward in technology blue screen and and i wish you know i wish they could have used that in say uh, harry Housen's last film clash of the titans which is one of my favorite films of all time not that new yeah, i believe that's coming up in a year or two yeah i think uh i want to say it's next year for for 81 i want to say it's 81 probably nice yeah, but there, I, I have to correct you on one little thing. There was one tiny bit of stop motion in in A New Hope. The trash compactor monster. Oh, that yes, that's true, that's true. But you know, he wasn't he wasn't looking at innovating stop motion at the time he did that. It was you know more for him. <clears throat> he learned. Okay, I got one more. I got one more thing to say. Is um, back when I first was on my own. And I went into the military and I got stationed in Korea and I had a little bit of money saved up and I bought me a, um, a 27 inch TV and a VCR and a, a pioneer stereo with a bunch of bow uh, speakers. First thing I bought was the star Wars trilogy on VHS. Okay. Nice man, and the first movie I put in was Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the best. Yeah, we had a Betamax bootleg of Empire Strikes Back, and I wore that thing out. I must have watched it like 160 <laughs> times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, oh. you know, when VHS first came out, the tapes were expensive. Yeah, the, the, you know, oh, yeah. The, not the blank tapes. The blank tapes were relatively oh, cheap. So. But but you know, to buy a movie on VHS, you know, you're looking at 50, 60 bucks, sometimes even eighty. Oh yeah. Depending so, on you know, depending on what time frame you're looking at and what movie it is. This shit was expensive. When I was ten years old, my dad went out and he asked he asked the the dealer like what's the best to get and he said the beta so he got the beta and we started recording out um the empire strikes back and stuff like off the cable and that's when i slow was slow motioning it just like checking it out and then that's when i saw the twi'lek dancer and her boob was like completely out all green <laughs> all green and i was like no way and i hit pause and i was like 10 years old going, whoa oh. yeah you know what? <laughs> i'll say it later Sorry. Nice. Well, that's uh, that's the entire list there. Um, and you, as you can see, Empire Strikes Back, the very best of the S tiers of the year. The no, the only movie that every single one of us voted uh, picked. Um, 1980, great year for movies, but the 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 years to come get even better. Yes. Because uh, yes. the 80s, like such an amazing decade for movies. Um, but yeah, that's that's gonna be about it for tonight, folks. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Curtis, if you want, I would say go ahead and throw a link in the chat so because uh, uh, you know, we'll give people a few minutes if they want to jump in and we'll go backstage. Yeah, um, real quick, um, just to let you guys know, our next show for the movies is the 24th, I believe. It's a Saturday. Yeah, two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. Next week, we're going to do a Halloween bangers. I'm going to start, start the Halloween bangers as well. So, On Friday? No, on Saturday. Next Saturday. So bangers, then 81? Yeah, we're going to skip 
Oh, I see what you're saying. I see your bangers one weekend, and then yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, Curtis, Pat, Pat showed up. What up, Pat? Hey, what, what up, Pat? Pat? Robert, later, Robert. Mark Osprey, Chief Fried. Yeah, Curtis, yes, are you going to throw a link out there for anyone who wants to jump backstage with us? Yes. Big, uh, big thanks to everybody who showed up and listened to us ramble. Yeah, that's cool, man. We <laughs> live in those so 80s movies, man. And we'd all appreciate any subs or uh, thumbs up on our channels. If you check us out, you might like some of our different content as well. Yes. Yeah, let, let's go through one more time. I mean, you guys know Curtis's channel because we're on it right now. <laughs> yes. Um, my channel, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, PD Destro 1973 on Instagram and the profit directors channel on YouTube. Uh, Ed. Uh, yes. Um, uh, youtube.com forward slash at geek one word 4248. Uh, also on Facebook as geek home world. Uh, I even get a gaming channel up there. I hadn't done much with, um, nice. all, all of my, um, podcasts become audio podcasts. So, uh, geekhomeworld.libson.com is the main site for the audio podcast. Um, I'm on X at Geek Home World. Um, also, I'm on Instagram as I think at Geek Home World as well. Um, but you can hit me up anywhere. Best place probably to get me is YouTube. And I, I'm really trying to grow my, my YouTube channel, so I appreciate any and everybody that you know would sub to it and, and might be interested in a lot of content. Uh, September, just one last thing, September 7th will be the 10th year of my podcast, my current podcast. I've been podcasting since 2008. Um, so, cool, man. so yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, I, I want to invite everybody here to maybe my 10th anniversary. I can maybe, maybe we could do a live stream or something to celebrate. I hadn't figured out what, but, uh, thank y'all for letting me be part of all of this. And, and this is a blast. And, and I do last. <laughs> no, say, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, same here. Um, last thing I want to say is there were so many films in here. I was really getting worried. There were so many that were only rated like one person. But uh, there are a lot of films I've never heard of that I, that mm. now I've heard of now that I want to go check out from this right. stream alone. So I've learned a lot, and I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you. Oh, that's cool. Heck yeah. Uh, Digital, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. At Digital Caveman with two N's spelled, you know, just like it is on on the screen here, except the lowercase D. Um, you can find me on Threads the same way, but not those crazy acolyte Threads. We don't count those; those are the, the made up crap. So we don't we don't worry about those kinds of Threads. And uh, of course, on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Digital Caveman, just like it's spelled on the screen here, and I put the uh, the link in the the chat as well. And I drop action figure reviews five days a week currently. Nice. Marvel Monday. <sighs> Tuesdays is either G.I. Joe or Masters of the Universe. Ooh. Wednesdays is Star Wars. Thursdays mm -hmm. is Surprise Thursday. So it rotates through some different stuff that, that doesn't oh, fit okay. in anywhere else. And then, of course, the, the review type I started out on, Transformers Friday. Yeah. So if any of that interests you, please drop by, check out my content, like, share, subscribe. I do offer memberships if you're interested in supporting my channel in an additional capacity. Awesome. Moto Michael, That's where it. can they find you, my friend? Unfortunately, you can only find me on YouTube when I'm hanging out with the fam. I don't really do social media doesn't interest me and never has um don't mean to be a debbie downer but curtis's channel marco's channel Pax channel profit director and then every once in a while i'll pop in on cast and bruce um but other than that i just like to talk about the 80s and uh, the experiences and what it brought to our lives what we learned from it and uh, how it pretty much shaped us to who we are now. And that's why we preach about us so much now, which is kind of crazy, you know? We don't preach about the 90s or the 2000s. We, we preach about the 80s. So you, you, can find, you can find me on YouTube, y'all. Yo. Or in Colorado. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hit me up. I can show you some we'll, cool we'll shit. Address. Oh. Uh, M3, how about you? Where can we find you, my friend? None of your damn business. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Hey, I've never seen M3 on a whole stream where he's had an avatar up completely. No, he popped up to show us the thing of we Yeah, he, he continues the legacy right, bro. There's some <laughs> things we shouldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, M3, M3, you seriously don't want to give him your YouTube channel or anything? No, I'm good, yeah. All right, well, I'll go ahead and do it for him. M3 Reviews. <laughs> we sometimes go on there and stream as well. No. Subscribe, Bye. check us out. And uh, with that, uh, you know, uh, anyone who wanted to get in uh, to the backstage, oh, school. we're going to give you another three minutes. Hey, can so somebody at help me move that casting couch around? Well, twelve oh four, Curtis's time. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I ain't gonna We're gonna stop the stream. That'd be some dope, dude. That'd be cool. Uh, <laughs> but that's that. That's it for nineteen eighty one, folks. Thank you for showing. Oh, up. 1980. 1980. 1980, I'm sorry. Nineteen eighty. Nineteen eighty one's in two weeks. <laughs> yes. Um, that's so it for nineteen eighty. Uh, everyone who showed up in the in, in the chat on any of the channels that was multi streaming it, thank you very much for coming. Uh, every member of the panel, thank you for taking the time out of your day to give me your list so I could put this together. Yes, sir. And uh, Curtis, thank you very much for running it. Uh, much obliged to everyone involved. And, thank, uh, you, that note, thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Director, for making a great oh, show. A great show with your edit, you, all your your. Good work, dude. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Agreed. Thank you very much. You and, agree. And, good. and I will, I will have to say, Prophet, you, you did a good job keeping a rein on all of us, especially Ed. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's yeah well, you know, <laughs> if we don't, we don't want to turn it into chaos, man. Uh, Somebody's got to rein it in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's see what time. Has it been three minutes? No? Yeah, one more minute. One what's... more minute, guys. Anyone in the chat who wants to jump in? Hey, I'll, Mark Cosplay, Pack, anybody? Oh, I'm gonna mark jump in. I seen a bunch of people jumped off here. Yeah, <laughs> Oscar's still five people watching. Yeah, there's still five. Yeah, still five us, watching. It's all of us. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that probably is right. <laughs> right. No shit. Huh? All right. Well, anyone who didn't jump in and wanted to, you're too damn late. Sorry. Yeah, too Where to send this damn thing? <laughs> <laughs> we are going to end this thing right now. <sighs> Uh, what? <laughs> old school, what's up, old school? What are you doing? Yeah, we came in just under three hours. Yeah, that was, that was long, yeah. dude. I know. I didn't think it'd be that long. Fantastic. Holy shit! Yeah, I, I think I think eighty one probably won't take as as uh, long to do because I don't think there's going to be as many like single choices. True. In eighty one, I think I think there'll be. I don't you know, know more because I think we might have more stuff. choices. You know, uh, I think as the years go on, like because we each have our nostalgic attachments to different things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, there may yeah. be even more, you know, diversity in the in the picks later on because there's more to choose from. You know. That's funny. Is is brain scanners nineteen eighty one? But yeah, guys, uh, everyone who wants to participate in 81, just uh, send me a list, just like you did this uh, last one. Uh, I'd appreciate it if they're in before the, uh, you know, before we do Halloween bangers, so I have a little more time to put it together. Yeah. Because this was kind of a last minute scramble for me. I hope it came out. Oh, you did a great job. uh, I can have you 81s by tomorrow if you want, brother. Awesome. Yeah, the sooner yeah, the better, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sooner I have your list, the the faster I can get the shit put together. But now it won't be the ones that I only watched in eighty one. You understand? Now, now I know it could be anything that I watched that that is an eighty one movie. Yeah, what? the movie just had the only requirement is it had to come out in eighty one. Okay. Just, you know, because what I what I want you to give us is your favorite movies from that year. That's the world. Just how I get it. Cool. Yeah, and, and you know what? He has never said that you couldn't put a porn in there if you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, no, 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 no. The, they had to have they had to have been released at the at the regular theaters. Oh, okay. It had to go to the uh, the, the regular box. So, so, regular so, it had, to, it had to go to the theater. So behind the theater on the dumpster doesn't kill. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. no, it had to have a theatrical release. <laughs> you had to see it at the theater, right? 
No, you didn't have to see it at the theater. It just had to have a theatrical release. Oh, okay. Yes. And and I found out doing doing this one. See, like Superman two didn't originally make my list because domestically it was released in eighty one. Correct. But it was released in eighty in Australia only. Everybody, everywhere else got it in eighty one. Yeah, and likewise, that's the reason Mad Max couldn't be on there. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because Mad Max would have been on mine. Not, not that you know, Mad Max was any great masterpiece, but you know. Yeah, I liked it better. As I we 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 never would have gotten Mad Max beyond Thunderdome without Mad Max or the Road Warrior. Well, I would argue the Road Warrior is better than Thunderdome. Oh, it probably is, but you know, that's the that one is. I, I want to say Thunderdome is probably the most quotable, and it's probably the funnest. At least while he's in Barter Town. Now, once he leaves Barter Town, it gets kind of, you know, basic Mad Max kind of movie. Well, to quote Tina Turner, I don't think we needed another hero at that point. <laughs>